Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Welcome to Monday's live stream guitar build. Uh, today I am going to be, I hope, completing uh, this bass. And uh, this is an instrument that hasn't actually yet made it onto the main Crimson channel. And it represents the first time ever. It represents the first time ever that I have been fully in front of the editors. Uh, an entire series of builds filmed and ready to edit before it's hit the channel. This has been the goal for for a long time. Uh, yeah. Anyhow, you guys have helped me achieve it through the, the, through the live stream. Now, uh, this is... This is going to be a good day. We're pretty much there. The instrument has been uh, has been shielded entirely throughout pickups and control cavities. The there is no fret work. I woke up in panic last night thinking the frets and no, it's fretless. We're good. Uh, so it's going to be a simple case of installing the pickups, wiring up, uh, putting the hardware on, and uh, having a string and see where we go. I, I'm not going to promise times. I've learned that that's a bad, a bad, bad idea. But in reality, uh, we should be done fairly rapidly. And I might even move on to doing something else uh, at the end of the day. We shall see. Uh, as it stands, uh, this is a live stream, but and I don't have anybody uh, currently helping on the computers, although that is something that uh, may change. Uh, Tanya might pop through uh, during the day. Uh, at the odd times to, to have a chat. I'm going to have the comments running on the laptop here on the uh, on my workbench. Uh, any super chats will 100% be answered. Absolutely. Uh, general questions in the chat, if I see them, excellent. Uh, and uh, but if not, then uh, it, it's one of those things. We'll we'll see what happens. Um, Fuka Mies come in straight away and says, "Don't drop the bass while finishing the bass, or Lisa H will be cross." This instrument is going to be raffled off. Somebody will win it. Lisa Lisa has convinced herself that she will be winning this raffle, so we shall see. We shall see. Um, okay, Walter36 asks, what wood is used on the body? It is uh, English ash, but it is very pippy English ash. It has uh, English axe, yeah. Um, I mean, what would define an English body spray? I, I don't know. There's a lot of, there are a lot of inclusions and, and barky sections in the wood, which is why it's got this beautiful finish. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting thing. Uh, Paul Needs, hey Paul, how are you? Uh, Paul Needs uh, says he really likes the brass tube around the truss rod access and that he needs to try that in his next instrument. Uh, I, I, it's obviously not a... An original idea of mine. It's something that uh, Fender have been doing with Walnut forever. But uh, yeah, I do. I do like how it's turned out with the uh, uh, with the brass there. I'm obviously preparing myself. Uh, so this morning has been. I've been running uh, from pillar to post. Uh, I had to be at uh, Crimson headquarters at nine, which is uh, uh, about half an hour away from from where this workshop is and uh, had to get some work done there quickly before running back, rushing back, shall we say. And there we go. So anyway, we've, we've got Fukumi, we've got the steamy cream of Jewel Jabbar, uh, Ape Song, Matt Toman, Andy Bohm, Walter 36, Paul Needs, uh, Jerry Frizzee, Terry Love, good morning Terry, how are you? NTO Steve, the big unit, anonymous botch. Um, already in the house, uh, Bartissimo, uh, I'm not sure, uh, Bartosimo is off currently watching the Adair Guitars premiere of episode three, which I will be checking out this evening because I'm particularly enjoying uh, his work, incredible instruments, and uh, just an all round cool individual. And there we go. Okay, Sawdust Passion, hey, how you doing? Okay, here is the instrument. I installed the tuners last time. That's interesting. I've got a little bit of uh, 
few little spots of shielding paint seem to have somehow managed to make their way all the way over to the back of the neck. Anyway, that's all done. Uh, okay, now on top of things... <laughs> Thank you very much, Andy. Uh, Andy Bohm says he seems to have... He feels like he's missed an episode or two uh, during which this base has got even more gorgeous. Uh, I do appreciate it. There's a close-up of that while I go and grab camera three. And then we can we can start things in earnest, shall we? There's been a slight change to the audio as well. Um, Kree Varai, who is one of our... one of our moderators and a great friend to the channel, uh, suggested that uh, I upgrade the microphone to a Sennheiser uh, lapel set and uh, I yeah I'm very very happy with uh, with where we've ended up sound wise it's one of the most important things that uh, has really been uh, letting the channel down recently It's at this stage that you sort of look around and see if there's anything that you would uh, uh, like to change or upgrade. Uh, see what's wrong, if anything. And, uh, and if there is anything, now is the time to fix it. We have got a comment from the steamy cream of Jewel Jabbar who says, I always forget how awful my username is until someone reads it out loud. You do have the ability to change it, sir. I, I assume, sir. So I'm not going to assume anything actually based on that username. Don't know. All right, we've got the bridge ground hole wire drilled. We've got the uh, uh, holes from the pickups to the control cavity drilled. We've got a nut installed and in and good. The tuner's already in. The logo is done. And my bench is too short. What can I say? Ah, okay, yes, I have it. I have it. Uh, I knew there was something that I needed to remember that needed to be redone. And essentially we've got traditional side dart markers, which are in between Fritz 3, 2 and 3 and 4 and 5, etc, etc, etc. And that's not actually accurate. This is now a fretless instrument. When we started building it, it was not planned to be fretless. Well, I wasn't entirely sure what was going to end up happening, actually. Uh, we decided it was going to be fretted. My original plan was fretless. We then decided fret ed and then went back on ourselves. I need to put some markers in on the end of each fret. I don't even know how I want to do this, come to think of it. Essentially, the musician needs to be able to see the end of each fret, because that is where the intonation point is going to be. We've currently got some dark blue glow-in-the-dark material in the whole fret slot, and from the front you can see it, which is fine, but uh, well, you can see it to a certain extent. Relatively subtle. Uh, but that's not quite good enough. So, uh, so yeah, I'm going to have to go in and take some of that epoxy out and put in some white, some white veneer, I think. Okay. Fukumi says, true, the new mic seems to work ace. Gareth Travis says, needs a cup holder route for coffee on the lower bout. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh. 
Not enough coffee in my my in my in my life. Um, LEDs would be fun. LEDs are absolutely not at this point uh, viable. Uh, the fretboard is on, and uh, while it is possible, it's not something I've quite figured out how to do without removing the whole fretboard. Okay. Ha. Okay, Leeds, uh, Leeds in Shetland says, Did chat get Talitha sacked from the live stream due to their silly games? Uh, that bass guitar is looking sumptuous. It's rather attractive, isn't it? And strokeable. Very strokeable. Um, technically, no, although um, there is one thing that you don't mess with, and that's my workshop. So uh, I, I fully and freely admit to, to uh, becoming somewhat annoyed with chat's silly games. Um, <clears throat> it was, what was it? It was when she stole my pencil. That's, that's, that's a absolute no-no. Don't, don't steal a man's tools. Mm -mm. Uh, no, it's, I'm, basically the chat is, Talitha's job is editing and she's incredibly good at that and very good at running the, the, the chat as well. But uh, having two people doing the live stream full time, it was, it's just not viable. It's uh, a waste of her time uh, where I can actually do this. I can do this myself, and this also means that I can do these sorts of streams on a much more regular basis. I can, I will always be doing uh, one a week, but I can, if I fancy it, on another day, just say, hey, I'm going to do a stream and do it without having to schedule with other people, etc. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Now, <clears throat> yes, I need to change this camera and then actually crack on. We've got uh, the first super chat of the day from Terry Love. Thank you very much, Terry. Uh, Terry says, extend the fret slot down the side and fill it. That is, uh, yeah, that is exactly the plan. So on the right hand side, what gave me pause for thought was how am I going to differentiate the 3, 5, 7, 9, 12, etc. Um, and essentially, we're going to have to have something different there, either a much deeper slot on those ones or a, or a different color. Uh, just on those ones. So there we go. <laughs> the big unit says, I'm only here for about two hours this morning. I have to lecture on 35,000 volt electrical work slash arc flash safety today. You have a very interesting life, sir. And Fukumi is like, with all this fretting about frets, it almost seems like Ben is trying to summon right set fret. Okay. That's a better shot of where we currently stand. <sighs> Everything is awesome. I'm just logging in. I'm just logging in the computer in the background here uh, for when Tanya comes through. And she'll be able to have a look at the, at the chat and see what you guys are talking about. I'm sure she's gonna pop through at some point. There we go. Buck Rogers, coffee with Ben before work. Black Wraith, morning Black Wraith. Uh, Gareth Travis says, silly question Ben, for paint refinish jobs on older axes, what is your preferred uh, grain filler for dings that are too deep to steam out? Um, if it's a complete refinish on a solid, on a solid colored instrument, I would probably just use super glue, uh, to be honest. Um, a good, uh, a good medium or thick super glue in there uh, is nice and hard and, and uh, yeah, does the job. Does the job perfectly. It's going to be a sore job, isn't it? This is the thing.
Okay, so this way I can go from the, uh, uh, from above and out. And that will, uh, yeah, that'll work better. And I think I'm going to be using this gorgeous vintage gents saw by Buck. But before I get there, well, before I get there, I'm going to drink this cup of coffee and I'm going to figure out what we're going to put in this, uh, uh, in this cavity. Just a standard veneer would do quite well. But in reality, In reality, don't you think a little bit of copper would work quite nicely? Brass, that's it. I forgot, we have got gold hardware. We've got gold hardware going on. I wonder if I've got any brass that's thin enough. Um, yeah, let's see. Okay. There is that very necessary, very necessary part of my day out of the way. That was coffee number four, from which point I will actually be functional. Uh, let's have a look for some brass, shall we? sorts of stuff and lots and lots of thick brass material here off cuts and and whatnot that's uh, one and a half millimeters thick or so uh, lots of copper I do think copper could work I don't have thin brass stuff Tools, punches, sensor drills, nickel, silver, shim stock. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> okay, uh, no point, a point naught naught eighth of an inch brass shim stock. And there's various other shims in here. 0.15. That looks a little bit too thick. All right. Whenever people say it's not good to hoard, uh, show them this bit. I completely and utterly forgot I had this shim stock and it turns out to be exactly perfect for the task I have in mind. I just need to find, uh, I just need to find the right size really. Oh, Garage Master Guitars asks, what are the grits of the crimson fret rubbers? Uh, it's coarse, medium, fine, and super fine. The, the actual grits that go into the rubber are not the effective grit of what it actually looks like. The combination of putting it in the rubber, etc., makes so if we have a, say, an 80 grit in the coarse, which it's 80 grit or 150 grit in, in the coarse rubber. In reality, it acts a little bit more like 240 or so. So that's quite difficult. But uh, that should be that should be on the uh, on the website, to be honest. Uh, and if it isn't, please let me know so that I can uh, uh, yeah talk to the guys at headquarters. Uh, now the reality is that uh, the super fine acts somewhat like. I'd say about an 8,000 or a 10,000 grit. It's really, 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 really shiny. And then say 6,000 for the fine, um, two and a half thousand or so, 2,000, 1,500 probably for the medium. And then the course is about 800 grit or so. Maybe a bit lower, maybe 600. Okay, scalpel blade.
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the scalpel blade to mark where I'm cutting first. I'm sure that my saw will feel the difference between the wood and the epoxy, but well, let's absolutely, let's not leave anything to chance. The other thing that I want to do is mark out where I'm going to be cutting to so that I don't go too far. And I'm going to use my old friend masking dope for that. We don't want this to be too over the top. Uh, do I want it to end with... So if I put it there, that's essentially going to be base, viewed head on. Uh, that's going to be... They're all going to be ending just underneath the first string or thereabouts. And I think that's, I think that's good. This is typical me. There's, uh, there's always, there's always a, a slight curveball. Oh, we'll get this done in two hours. Ah, let's do a whole other two-hour thing first, shall we? So. Yeah. That actually works quite well. So initial cut with that. And I'm using my thumb to hold it in place. And there we go. Point nought nought eight shim stock. A little bit too much wiggle room. Hmm. Point nought one five an inch. That's pretty good. Some of this is supremely thin. That's, yeah. Point naught naught one. Isn't that amazing? Tanya, how are you? Okay. Um, yeah, your computer's up and running if you want to say, uh, say hi. Uh, uh, the mic is not currently on. Hold on. There we go. That should be on now. Okay. So, hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, they were asking just now if Talitha's hijinks, um, with, if the chat's hijinks using Talitha as a puppet got her fired. Ah, that's what we're after. I think point naught naught seven should. It's a little, still a little big actually. So where have we've, point naught one five is is the, uh, is the one for us then. It's a little thin, but uh, not too bad. Big unit saying, Mrs. Bun, hello. Good morning, Mrs. Crow. Good morning, Mrs. Ben from an anonymous botch. How are you finding doing the chat and the 
It's, it honestly actually works really well uh, for the most part. Um, it allows me to to chill out. People know that I'm going to stop and concentrate for a bit, and that works better because it it gives Talitha and Bear more footage to deal with. Um, that's nice and clean and without me <laughs> prattling constantly. But also, um, yeah, it's it's good. I, I essentially get to choose the whole the momentum of everything. I suppose is the thing. But. Uh, yeah, Buck Rogers, uh, uh, what nice it up and down on the 12th fret and down after the 12th, 15th. Oh, I know what you mean. <laughs> what nice it up and down. I love autocorrect. It does add some confusion to, to, to matters. Uh, you would like me to do the brass on the top edge and then on the bottom edge after the 12th fret, which I, I do like from the point of view of being a viewer looking at the guitar, but the player needs to have these uh, along the top edge for themselves at this point. Um, okay. But since we have Mrs. Bunn in the chat, uh, you guys have got to uh, send through some super chats and some questions and things. Uh, now this is three tenths of a millimeter, just over three tenths of a millimeter thick, this shim stock. But uh, yeah, they will work nicely. Peter Crosley's brought up donuts. Is that something we need to know about? <laughs> um, just in general, we have an issue with donuts. Um, I don't have any specifics to uh, um, to admit to, shall we say? I'm wondering about going in on this one just with the saw. Yeah, I think that's fine. I'll use masking tape to mask the depth of the uh, on the other side as well. Mark Ellis is saying just arrived, but for, only for a short break. I inlaid brass markers on a fretless recently and it worked well. I may add a resin coat to the brass so the brass won't tarnish. Good work. Yeah, this is the thing. <clears throat> I'm going to... Uh, uh, I'm going to give whoever wins, uh, I'm assuming Lisa at this point, um, I'm going to send whoever wins this a, a set of fret rubbers as well and uh, it, it'll just be a case of polish up the, the brass every now and then as it's required. Um, no, I'm just gonna eyeball that. That's actually just getting in the way. Fine. Okay. Peter Crosley's comments, uh, ADHD sounds for attention deficit. Hey, donuts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, two yeah, of my favorite nice. things. <laughs> Um, can we put that on a t-shirt? It must be on a t-shirt already. <laughs> Speaking of which, the, um, uh, this t-shirt is currently uh, available on Crimson Guitars, but it's not in the merch section yet. I just need to send a message about that. Um, uh, and I need to mark that as unread, damn it. There's so much going on. Oh, 
There we go. Super chat here from Terry Love. Terry. Everyone remember this week to keep an eye for Ben flagging after 4 p.m. and get him to eat <laughs> or suck a candy. No I, candies. No candies. Uh, I actually stuffed my face with peanut butter and jam uh, sandwich just before uh, going on stream to give me a little bit more time. Comment from NTU Steve, nut slotting file would make the slot required width. Yes, but uh, I've also got the um, I've got the epoxy already in place, and I'm trying to get the bulk of the epoxy out. Um, but uh, very, very good point. I'm just going to pretend that I thought of it and discounted it, uh, you know, already, because that makes me look better. Roger says it's actually easier to play with the markers on the 12th fret down G string as a bass player who plays fretless. Okay, hold on. It is easier to play with the markers down the G string. Oh no, hold on. It's actually easier to play with the markers on 12th fret down. G-string as a bass player. Yeah, so that he's saying that it's better to have the, the markers on the other side because you can see it. I suppose it depends on how you physically play. Hmm. Okay. Um, maybe I'll do both. Because, yeah, it's, it's, all about, uh, it's all about how you're actually... Oh. Seeing, so from, from here... I mean, if you... Uh, I can see that. I can see that as well. A bit of both. Well, let's see how it looks. I'm going to do. I'm going to do the the the, the base side first, and see how I feel after that. A super chat from Jazz Trucking Guitars. Hey Jazz, how you doing? Says, good morning. I'll be ghosting in the stream. I just started driving for the day. Have a good drive. Be safe and. Uh, yeah, let us know if you see any idiots doing anything. Uh, Casey McDermott sent a super chat. Says, Tanya, what TV shows are you watching? Uh, we just started <laughs> watching The Staircase. I've seen that bit, about. it looks good. Hearing your, I'm not sure about this word, euphonious voice is always a treat. Cheers. Euphonious works. <laughs> What's happening? This image looks really dark. Hmm. I've just watched um, Stranger Things, so I'm up to date now. You're up to date on that. That was good. I wanted more though. <laughs> so, can't wait for the next one. Um, what else have we been watching? Orson and I are watching uh, Obi-Wan. I've been um, uh, watching Peaky Blinders as well. I'm not quite there at the end of that because I, I started it a while ago, couldn't get into it, and then everybody was like, you've got to watch it, you've got to watch it, so I give it another chance. It's, it's good. Okay, Terry Love says, okay, so Ben's two-hour job before his main two-hour plan has now become a four-hour distraction. <laughs> <laughs> Always. It's all good. It's all good. I, honestly, this is this is the thing. I uh, I really don't mind going off piste. There's no there's no customer currently waiting for this. There's no issues. Um, if it ends up with a being a better instrument, it, it's uh, it's all good. There's more Stranger Things coming in July. Well, that's not too too long to wait. That, that's pretty good. Perfect. What was that medical uh, show that you've just been watching? Oh, uh, I'm just yeah. When I'm when I'm like just cooking or doing something boring, I watch um, Chicago Med at the moment. It's it's okay. It's the thing is shows like that. It's it's kind of all been done really, but um, it's alright for background noise. 
I'm pretty sure you're talking to people who prefer guitar building live streams as background noise. <laughs> just, just saying. Big unit says soaring by the body, nervous reaction. Yeah, yeah, I know. This is why I've just changed the camera so you guys can see in in see full HD. Doing. So, just a second ago when I um, clicked on my phone and said I need to mark that as unread, that was a message from somebody saying, you've got to check out this video uh, because Dave Simpson's just done this video. Uh, so I haven't seen the, it yet, but I've literally just discovered that it happened, but didn't want to. Um, uh, it's incredible. I met him at the, at the guitar show, at the Birmingham Guitar Show and uh, I've wanted to meet him and do something with him for a hell of a long time and apparently the feeling is mutual and uh, while I was there I just handed him the river guitar and said here borrow this not asking him to do anything on video or anything like that just he was just ogling the guitar and playing it for ages I was like well, just, just take it home have some fun um, and then yesterday I was looking at the wall going there's something missing <gasps> where's my river guitar oh I remember that's okay I lent it to Dave Simpson. And then the guy I was talking to was like, uh, name dropped much. <laughs> it's very funny. Anyway, uh, yes, I'm looking for, I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, so there we go. He's a, he's a cool dude. Okay, so that is that is the bulk of these done to that spot. Of course it didn't. Oh, I, I know why. Haha. <laughs> Let's go from that angle. I think three, five, seven, nine, twelve, etc. I'm going to make them both deeper uh, on the front edge and longer on the uh, on the instrument side. A technical question from George Davis: What is the absolute thinnest the neck can be at the nut for width in millimeters? Uh, we've got too many variables here. Uh, you say width, so that's assuming the, the width of, of the, uh, the nut rather than the depth of the nut. Honestly, it, you can get away with pretty much anything as long as you personally are comfortable playing it. Now, width uh, tends to be th the thinnest, I would suggest, is like 38, 39 millimeters, really. That's a really compressed uh, nut width. For depth, You've got a nine millimeter deep truss rod uh, cavity uh, that you do not want to carve into. So nine millimeters plus your say seven millimeter fretboard uh, it gives you a sixteen millimeter thickness. That would be if you're doing it with carbon fiber or something like that. That could be done, but it wouldn't feel very nice. Um, Eighteen twenty millimeters is, is around about. Yeah, we can engineer an incredibly thin neck if we want to. Uh, how comfortable does it play? Who knows? Okay, now this is where I really, 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 really need to get this right. Like 100%. I might leave now then to get the dogs to the vet and I will come back and see okay. you all Damn in it. a short while. 
I need to relearn how to tell time on this watch. I did my watch is wrong. I did change my watch, didn't I? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't even know what time. You so, told me my watch was wrong earlier. Yeah, okay. It is 22, 8 plus 3, 8, 20 to, 20 to 12. Okay. Is that correct? Pretty yes. much? Yes. There Pretty we go. Much. This this watch is incredible. It's a um, sort of, it's a really cool brand called Seven Friday. Darling, See you bit. have fun. Uh, yeah, good luck with the puppies of the bear. Um, and essentially it's got, there you go, just a total digression, just for shits and giggles. Can you actually see that? No, you can't. There we go. What's happening with the lighting? There we go. So you've got naught one, two, three, four, and then you've got a little thing that's got naught plus, eight plus and four plus, and it's currently eight plus three. So 8, 9, 10, 11, so it's currently 11, and then that's the minutes there. And that's a little second hand going there. And uh, I'm not particularly good at math, but I love the way this thing looks. Um, and what's more to the point is I picked it up for a, like absolute bargain price. It was a few hundred pounds. Um, and uh, yeah, I love it. Anyway, sorry for the digression. Uh, Okay, George Davis says, I was looking at 42, if that was too small. No, 42 is uh, fairly large. Yeah, uh, or, or close, to, close to normal. Okay, uh, what I need to do is use the masking tape, completely distracted myself there. I'm gonna use the masking tape to mark off where I wanna cut, just because. One, two, three. Forget that. Ha ha, ha 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 ha. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. So, and that's the 12th fret there. And then we double check. Afterlife Guitars, how you doing? George Davis, you good? Uh, Lisa, Lisa, morning, morning. The big unit hates super thin necks, he has massive hands. Uh, I mean, it's all in, it's all in the name, sir. Now. Get a different angle on camera three. Okay. I'm wondering if it's going to be too subtle to actually bother going much deeper on those. I think I'm just going to leave this side and just make these ones longer and then see how that, see how that turns out. Can't see. Not good enough.
Big Unit uh, Super Chat says, to the end, to that end, I need to figure out better camera angles for my build. My massive hands get in the way of my camera shots too often. Uh, lol. I, uh, I, I don't have particularly massive hands and I'm also uh, always having to change shots. It's, yeah, it's one of those things. Black Wraith says, Ben, would this really be a live stream without a digression? Or 50. Fair point. We don't actually have all that much that we have to achieve today. So, uh, yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Now the other, an alternative would be to use the brass just for these ones and copper or something else for the other thread markers. But I don't think that's necessary really. Okay. Problem is, I don't particularly want to try and cut each piece when it's on the fretboard. The more, the more filing and cutting and, and messing around when it's actually glued in, the more likely I am to heat the very small piece of metal up to a point where it starts delaminating the glue. And even if that delaminates the glue a little bit, uh, over time, things might move. So what I'm going to have to do is do this a sort of semi-complicated way and essentially put the piece in and then use a scalpel blade to mark what I need to cut out. And I've got a little diamond there that you probably can't see on the screen and cut that out by hand to within uh, maybe let's say a millimeter or within a millimeter and uh, then that will be glued in and this is going to be a little bit fiddly. If I was using a standard wood veneer it would be so much easier it's just whack a bit of veneer in, sculpt it off, chisel, sand, done. But of course, we're overcomplicating things. This is, this is something in which I have some experience. <clears throat> okay, I saw the word Dave, the name Dave Grohl. Uh, Garage Master says, I've often wondered how to cut. Uh, no, did I see Dave Grohl or did I not? Uh, Garage Master Guitar says, I've often wondered how to cut for these fret markers. Simple when you see it done. No, nope. uh, it's one of those things. Who's talking about Dave Grohl? Nobody? I'm seeing things. Graham B says, so I started my day with Ben. This was last night, uh, eight o'clock this time when I did the live stream Q&A. And here I am going to bed watching Ben. Have I got a problem? Lol, nah. George Davis says, Lisa should uh, tell me that she wants uh, solid gold um, for position markers, which is something that we could potentially do. Um, but uh, I'd say maybe on a custom order, wouldn't you? Okay, there we go. That's what we're doing. And uh, yeah, I'm happy. Now, let's just have a look. We've got 210 viewers. 
currently. I've kept up with all the live stream uh, with the Q&As. Uh, Toby D says, will your watch inspired? Uh, I will watch. <sighs> okay, basically I've got a, a, a guitar build coming along that is inspired by watches and uh, a horology and all that sort of stuff. I really am so interested in the mechanics of it and, and the looks and, and things like this. Uh, it doesn't have to be an expensive watch to be incredibly cool to look at and, and use. And um, uh, yeah, Toby D is going to be watching along, basically. Uh, he says watches and mechanics and mathematics and stuff is just fascinating and cool. And uh, yeah, I sincerely hope that I do this thing justice. It's going to be digression filled, I'm sure. <sighs> I am sure. Just move the base a little bit and in legic. Okay, that should do. Okay, so at the moment, if I if I mark onto that, you can sort of see what's going on, but it's uh, not that it's not that visible. Engineers blue is the stuff that you want, or just a permanent marker. I find myself wondering if I should just use tin snips. If I use tin snips, it's probably it's probably going to distort the uh, the metal a little bit, and I'll need to hammer it flat after after a second. Don't want to do that. I remember I broke a blade the last time I used this. The Lorb Gladen saw blades, three O's. That should do. Okay. After live guitars in with a super chat. Thank you very much. And says, hey, taking a break from my GGBO scratch build, lots going on. Like I met my dad for the first time. He's a woodworker, loves astrology. Hashtag galaxy guitar. Um, that's, uh, yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm, I hope that it was, uh, these things can go uh, can go two ways, can't they? But uh, it's incredible that uh, you're building guitars and are a woodworker, etc. And uh, uh, how it does beg the question: how many? So, how many of you have uh, immediate family members who are also creatives, makers, woodworkers, uh, and uh, uh, potentially also musicians? Uh, I I think we need to do a poll, don't you? So my my mother and father 
were both guitarists. My my mother's a creator, you know, uh, ran a, a company making clothes for people for years and years and years. My, um, I say company. <sighs> um, my father is a maker, creator, a, a, a woodworker, uh, making all sorts of things. Um, sadly, still in Zimbabwe rather than uh, anywhere here, but uh, that is very interesting to me. Now, I need to learn how to create a pole. It's down there, isn't it? Aha! Do you have relatives who are makers too? There we go. Oh, I see it. Cool. Am I allowed to answer my own poll? Don't know. No, I'm not allowed to answer my own poll. Yes, damn it. <laughs> okay. Come on then, I'm going to cut this out and see, uh, see where we end up. That's a little bit little. Pliers. Pliers? Not pliers. Tweezers. Poles currently at 56% yes. There we go, that works. Minimal filing to do. Uh, I just need to get some super glue. This is actually a good time for me to experiment with the... Uh... Uh, okay, so... Yeah, here we go, O3A black super glue i love their tagline quality sticks uh, or maybe their main business is making walking sticks i'm not sure um, he jests so I'm, I'm i'm really not happy with the star bond the caps disintegrate rapidly after two or three months of using them, the, the material of the caps, I've had to actually masking tape together the caps on some of these things so that the, the cap, it's m most annoying. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm interested to see if that happens with this one, but this is also a UK made super glue, which uh, uh, yeah, we'll see. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to uh, put a dab of this super glue on a piece of cardboard or something. Let's find some, uh, let's find something that I don't mind throwing away. Here we go. And uh, each little piece of the, uh, uh, of the, the inlay, I'm just going to dab into the super glue and then it's going to take the super glue to the, uh, to the gap itself and we'll go from there. There will be some cleaning up of course, but it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Let's see.
Ooh, nice and thick. That's, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's really, really, really chunky. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna give the pole another minute and we're gonna end that. It's looking fairly even actually. Uh, and now that the uh, permanent marker is cured a little bit more on, on the side of this, that should work a bit easier. There we go. The next poll should be, how many people think that I'm going to ping one or more of these off across the room while doing the sort of, what, 17 or so I've got. 19 or so? 19. Don't be a fool, man. that one too close. There we go. Right. End of the poll. 52% have, yes, have relatives who are creatives and makers, and 48% no. That is actually somewhat surprising to me. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, it's very interesting that um, uh, yeah, it was Afterlife. Afterlife Guitars uh, met his father for the first time ever, and his father's into uh, uh, is a woodworker and creative, etc. Tony Burns has also got a question. Uh, who says uh, once it was mentioned going fretless might mean fewer raffle tickets sold? Uh, you said you would add, add frets if if asked, which I will, um, are you making problems for yourself? Not really. Um, it's probably going to be easier to ping out uh, the brass than it would. Uh, it's, yeah, with the brass, just warm the whole thing up a little bit and a small chisel or scalpel blade underneath and they'll just ping out. It's all good. But, valid question. Okay. Now this is going to be a long one. I'm making sure to push it as deep into the uh, slot as I can. I also want to avoid cutting the fretboard if I can help it. 
although there is going to be some although there is going to be some sanding I'm sure now I mustn't forget to make it larger than I need This is quite a loud thing, I apologise. <laughs> that one did distort a little bit. Should I be wearing goggles at this point? Probably. Now the workshop extension is going very well and I'm looking forward to uh, I'm looking forward to moving my main work area into there uh, in the not too distant future. Oops. Fumbled. <sighs> okay, I think we're good. Wolf and Guitars is off to make some sawdust of his own. Afterlife Guitars was surprised by the pole too. Uh, Ali N says, will Ben get super glue on the laptop touchpad? Uh, so far, no. Will Ben super glue himself to the fretboard? Uh, 
Uh, Garage Master Guitar says, Dad was a very good jazz pianist. Brother has a band and a recording studio in Barbados. Wow. I haven't got a clue, so I build. I did play bass, badly, in a jazz band in Bahrain for a couple of years. Um, you will sound incredibly cool. The beginner says I'd be dropping those fiddly little bits like, as if, uh, like they were hot. I completely fl flum... I messed up the line, yo. <laughs> uh, VTR Addict says my cousin, who is also my boss, also makes knives among many other things. So far I'm the only one that's made a guitar though. I mean, guitars are cool. Just playing bass as I'm the, I'm the only musician in my immediate and extended family, I'm sorry to say. Ah, you rebelled, it's fine. Uh, there's a bunch of people talking about a bunch of really cool people. Flooring companies, retirement. There we go. Okay, fantastic. Um, Thank you very much, SM Myers. I'm looking forward to checking that out, actually. Uh, like, seriously. Thank you. Um, you are going to see me. Uh, Buck Rogers says, put the cap on your CA bottle. Yes. OK, fine. That's the one that's, that's next to the uh, laptop. I get it. My bad. Well, come on then. Let's uh, let's crack on. After that horrendous tanning off. I need more permanent marker. I'm going to go use pretty much every available edge. We shall see. Now, where are we? Have we already been going for an hour and 15 minutes? This is insane. How did that happen? Okay, so keeping the inlay section supported the whole time I was cutting on this longer one has ended up with a, a straighter section of material, which is good. Well, but still not perfect, actually, looking at that. I'm going to get the tin snips out. Let's see, see what they do.
Uh, yes, Joachim von Zuelen, that's what we're doing. The fret lines are going all the way around the fretboard. Uh, now, tin snips. There's a pair there, there's a pair there. Not very sharp. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what happens there. Okay. The, the big unit, I love this. It says, walking through the hotel lobby while Ben is sawing brass makes for lots of weird looks from people. What is that noise? Beautiful. Good night, Graham, have a good evening. Frugal Fixing Guitar says, Ben, how does popcorn and epoxy sound to fill my mold for a guitar body? Dad's out of hospital. Congrats uh, on your dad, and actually that sounds awesome. Um, yeah, that sounds incredible. All bit quite heavy still. I thought you wanted something light. Yeah, epoxy's gonna cause some issues with weight, I believe. So Okay, I'm not sure this is going to work. No, that's just not, that's just not precise enough. I've got a giant piece here. Nope, there we go. That's no on the tin snips, at least these tin snips. I am, however, going to use them to cut myself a nice square line there, he says. Completely messing it up. Maybe sharp tin snips are in order. And I've just used up that first blob of glue. Nice. All right, don't forget, I need your questions. Good morning, 6 a.m. Columbia time. Me too, Chris Buck. VTR addict, VTR addict says, you have more patience than I do for this. I would have cut a bunch of strips with an angle grinder and glued them all at once, then filed and sanded the fretboard to flush up. Uh, 
I, yeah, I don't want... Mm. Uh, Angle Grinder would be even louder than this, and we've got a couple hundred people here watching, so I, 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 I do want to uh, also not completely alienate you guys with sound, shall we say. Um, but again, the angle grind is a little bit less precise. Uh, just cutting each piece out, they, they, they're ending up a millimetre or so bigger than I need, um, which is about right. Is that a little hammer? That'll do. Yeah, before I get there, some more of this super glue. A lot more glue than that one. Uh, Jay's Trucking asks, uh, why not use a Dremel with a cutoff disc? It's just the volume. Um, I do, absolutely, that would absolutely work. It's just the volume of it. And with cutoff discs and things, you absolutely have to wear a dust mask. In a live stream setting, I'm, I would rather just do it by hand. Uh, a lot of my decisions are, <sighs> a lot of my decisions. A number of my decisions are made based not necessarily on the build process per se, it's about the filming of that build process. Um, sometimes I will make a choice because, um, uh, because the people watching are generally hobbyists who won't have access to a particular type of tool. Uh, for example, uh, finishing, I've used a lot of hand applied finishes. I, of course, I've got a spray booth. I've got access to a finishing department. I could finish all of my guitars in high gloss if I wanted to or nitro or whatever. Um, but most of my builds on the channel so far have not been that, if they've been oils or hand applied finishes because that's what most people, or many people I think, who watch the channel have access to. Now I'm changing that moving forward, but um, yeah, a lot of the time this, I'll use hobbyist level tools just to show that it can be done. Uh, but also, I tend to use quieter tools because, yeah, <laughs> I prefer quieter tools as much as anything else. Well, their brass is uh, not particularly quiet.
Nope. Nope. Awkward. Ah, that's better. Dumping off. Oops. Goggles on. Okay, somehow I've made that particular one a lot bigger than uh, I'd hoped. But hey, it is what it is. Frugal Fixer says, uh, Ben, how does popcorn and epoxy sound? Oh, and I've answered that one. Uh, I really like the idea of that. I think that would be great. Just heavy. How do the crimson dyes stand up to UV light? Pretty damn well, for the most part. There are various different ingredients, uh, but we haven't had anybody complain yet. Phil Richards says, Ben prefers quieter tools. Perhaps he should do a hand tool only build. Oh, wait. Yes, that is starting up again this week and I am really looking forward to, uh, uh, to doing that. I'm gonna have to do some serious penance <coughs> for uh, how long I've made you guys wait for that. I apologize. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I still seem to have a little bit of a cough going on. Stephen Hay says, uh, Hi Ben, Steve the Metal Guru here. Too much on your plate. Better quality than quantity. I agree. I agree, but... Mm, here's some news. So there's uh, 250 of you out here. So uh, just out of interest, we've just taken on a new workshop manager uh, at <coughs> at Crimson. We've we've been having some serious issues. Um, we have we've been having some serious issues with that problem across the board. Everybody overworked at headquarters, and not enough. <sighs> 
it's just not enough people basically. So we've just taken on a workshop manager. We've got a new full-time wood prep person. Um, the production department has some new, uh, has some really talented new staff as well, working, uh, building kit guitars and tools. And if any of you are waiting for Crimson Tools, that sh basically, Within the next couple of weeks, we will both be in stock and will, I hope, never be out of stock again, short of, you know, absolute crisis. Um, and uh, <clears throat> through doing all of that and creating some new positions and roles at, at headquarters, it's also going to make more time for myself and uh, uh, Tom and Sam and Ricky, uh, the four of us, run the company. And uh, it's going to you know, spread everything else out and make life better. But yes, fewer things done slower and better would be, would be ideal. I was about to say, I haven't dropped one yet, but uh, that's not wise, is it? I'm being very careful not to get uh, super glue dripping down the side. Uh, that would not be fun. Uh, Doug Santanello says, what time is it over there? It's currently 11, no, half past 12 in the afternoon. The saw going left to right past the lapel mic is making it sound like it's spinning around my head. I like it. <laughs> cool. Nikki Van Driel says, question regarding string through body holes, how to get them straight. Even with FAMAC drills, I got them off low or high RPMs. Uh, uh, Reddit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the RPMs necessarily of the drill. I tend to go fairly, fairly slow, to be honest. Uh, it is about how you mark it out. Now, um, you might have slow or high RPMs, but as you're going through with the pillar drill, go very, very, very gently. Don't put a lot of pressure on. It's pressure that sort of makes the, the drill that want to go sideways. What I do is I uh, mark where the bridge is, I mark exactly where all of the holes are, and I drill part way through with, part way through from the front. I don't go all the way through, I only go about halfway down with all of them. With the two outer strings, I drill all the way through very slowly. So the drill bit might be going fast, but I'm very gently going down through the wood, clearing the swarf and the dust regularly. Uh, it's a combination of pressure and everything being gummed up with sawdust that makes drill bits want to wander. Uh, I will drill those two outside holes and then flip the guitar over, use those two holes and the bridge to mark out the remaining four holes and I will drill those from the back. And that seems to me to be the best way to get the most accurate holes possible. Um, yeah. Okay. Cameron Gore says the new mic sounds really good. I'm, thank you very much. I'm really annoyed with myself for having gone cheap 
all for so long. I, I knew I needed to go and just get a quality mic. Uh, Yes, George Davis, PPE, you really, when you're cleaning your workshop, need to have a dust mask on. Generally, what I do is I'll put a full dust mask on and all that, open all the windows and just blow the dust straight out the windows. Um, nobody's complained yet. So uh, all the cars are parked up, all the cars. I have like 14 million cars. No, my uh, driveway and the neighbor's driveways are up there. If your workshop is next to your neighbor's driveway, I wouldn't suggest doing that. I also wouldn't suggest uh, using spray paint in your driveway because it will blow on somebody else's car and you will get into trouble. Never actually done that, but it's been close. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me know what your worst uh, sort of neighbour stories are, uh, issues that you've had with neighbours uh, to do with you as a maker or a musician. <laughs> Yeah, back in the day, I had more than a few uh, times where the cops were called because we were too loud. Now, as an adult, I fully understand. I was just remembering a back in the day, cops being called because we were too loud in the practice session. And uh, we practice at uh, one of the band members' houses. And uh, I've just realized that I never met this sort of person's parents. Uh, not once. And he lived in their house. It's funny the things you don't think about when you're uh, young and dumb. <clears throat> now I'm old and dumb and uh, can't stop thinking. A lot of people uh, watching Dave Simpson playing the uh, the Golden River uh, guitar. That's uh, yeah, that's makes me happy. Paul needs worst I had it was a downstairs neighbour who used uh, who used to whinge because I rolled my desk chair across the floor while I was writing stuff on the Mac. Okay, uh, yeah, no comment. Rene Montayo says, uh, that's pronounced wrong. I haven't received a complaint because I use speakers, uh, headphones now. Uh, that's the thing. Uh, I, I, uh, I have the Kemper Profiler for exactly that reason. Um, I was anti-digital forever. I always have been. Analog all the way uh, until I actually experienced it and, uh, and realized that I could play with headphones on and sound like, or sound 
very much like I'm using a an actual stack or whatever I want to dial in. Paul Cook says, it's odd how some neighbours complain about loud music, but don't think twice about their screaming kids in the garden all afternoon or their dogs barking all day. Yeah. That's uh, very true. I have the perfect neighbours, I think, actually. Yes, I must say I'm very, very lucky with my neighbours. Uh, on the one side, uh, it's as if they don't actually exist. They've got three children there and a couple of dogs and a bunch of cats. All I ever see is their cats shooting in my garden. Um, but, uh, uh, and then on the other side, um, they are, um, they're also really cool people and they often have parties. Uh, in fact, right now, as I speak, my neighbour, on this side is currently at Crimson Headquarters using his chainsaw uh, to uh, downsize some timber for us. I bought a, a load uh, at auction, a load of really, really nice mahoganies and things, but we're talking four inches thick by 20, 30 feet long. And they're just too big for us to process and he's doing that. But uh, they might have a, a, a banger of a party next door and 99% uh, of the time it's either hey we're having a party and it's going to go a little bit late is that okay and midnight on the dot they stop the noise or they won't tell us anything and it's going to be super loud and there's da 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 but 10 o'clock on the dot silence it's magic absolute magic uh, I don't know what I did to deserve this <coughs> I do sometimes worry about karma. You know, I, yes, I'm teaching a lot of you guys a lot of things that uh, you wouldn't know um, or, or would, you'd make mistakes and, and have issues with, etc. But also, I'm directly responsible for a hell of a lot of people spending a lot of money on, uh, on the hobby that is <laughs> guitar building. I'm not sure, uh, not sure how that balances out. Okay. I'm just realizing what we should have done is uh, super glue and inlay powder. That would have been much quicker and much easier than this nonsense. But anyway, uh, Matt Roman says, my neighbors are awful. Old guy, one side who has a vendetta against us for replacing a broken fence. And the other side is a family with three kids who F and blind and are incapable of not yelling. Uh, Uh, Rene Moncayo says your sister seems to pronounce C like a Z, makes it sound Hungarian. Oh, Aha, apparently I pronounced it correctly, accent and all the first time. Woohoo! And now I can't remember what I said. Damn it. Um, that makes me inordinately happy. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now, at this point, I've pretty much gone most of the way around and I've got the sawtooth pattern. Uh, I'm running out of uh, clean edges to use. And I've also got the guitar body here that I don't want to dig into. So, yeah, it's a case of uh, cutting off the excess, giving myself a nice straight line. There we go. A little bit wasteful, but yeah, that will make life easier moving forward. Um, how am I actually gonna come to think of it? I'm gonna have to actually just use this 
this end. I'm not going to have much space to play, am I? Now. Anonymous Botch suggests you record the kids screaming and the dog barking and all that and then play it back at full volume. I, I say go one step, well, and he says play it back, or they say play it back. I suggest get a PA system, actually get a decibel meter and, and record how loud they are and then play it back through a proper PA system matching the exact volume and keep it going. That would be awesome. I mean, you won't have a friendly relationship with them after that at all, but, you know, some things are worth doing. I don't think I've got that in deep enough. Nope, not at all. There we go. So we're past the halfway mark now, guys. Okay, I've got too much dried super glue on these. I need to clean them up. In fact, I've also run out of super glue again. I love how thick this is. Hmm, a 10 kilowatt rig should be okay for that suggestion. It really is a difficult thing. Uh, parenting and neighboring and, and all that. I'm convinced my neighbors don't watch the YouTube, but um, talking about fences and all that jazz, these guys on the one side are absolutely convinced that the fence line is theirs and their responsibility. Whereas in reality, <coughs> according to the surveyors and the council and all that, that's not the case. That's, that's my fence. And this one here belongs to those guys. So, but I'm in the, in the middle, I'm in between two neighbors, one side who rightfully are fixing the fence on that side. And, and you know, it's their responsibility. And on that side, they're saying, well, it's, it's their responsibility. So I don't actually have a fence line that I'm looking after. I don't want to complain too loudly. Um, but yeah, what can you do? If you actually, if, and I told them, I said, you know, when I first moved in, all oh, the deeds say this, and they ignored me. So, what can you do? Yeah, we're better than halfway now, people. It's going to be good.
Hold on, my phone won't stop going. I need to double check what's happening. Okay, that's quite clean. I haven't forgotten your trick. Griever, I'm still using the stuff. Uh, tools, tools, tools. Yep. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We got that. Let's. It's surprising how often I use a pair of tweezers. In guitar building. Why a long marker on the 11th? Uh, it's the 11th and 12th. It's just... Uh, it's habit to put a double marker for me at the, at the, around the 12th fret. Uh, I do hope that that doesn't actually cause some confusion. actually might come to think of it. Whoops. Yeah, that actually works. It doesn't cause any confusion to me because I don't know what the fret is happening. Recap, please. Hey, Andre, how you doing? Okay, so at this stage, I'm. Uh, we've got a fretless guitar, fretless bass guitar that was originally designed to have frets and then was made fretless. The side dot markers are where you would traditionally have them on a fretted instrument, i.e., in between. Uh, actual fret positions, but for a fretless instrument we need to have markers so people know where they're at. Um, exactly where, where each intonation point is, let's put it that way. So I'm going in and gluing in uh, tiny little brass slivers. I'm cutting them up as close to size as possible because I don't want to spend very much time heating up each individual one and delaminating the gluing process. Uh, I also didn't want to go in and do a traditional metal inlaying technique of cutting the slot and then dovetailing out the bottom so that I could then peen the brass into, uh, into the wood to create a physical bond other than super glue. So this, yeah, it's just one of those things. We've managed to create a two or three hour job uh, that didn't necessarily exist this morning because this is Crimson Guitars and I am currently building something. So hey, here we are. Uh, but it's nearly over. <laughs> nearly, 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 nearly there. I 
I'm planning on finishing this base today. Now, interestingly, I've also uh, set a, a couple of um, I'm hoping that the bots should be a little bit more controlled uh, today. I've set some words that uh, will just automatically mean that the message isn't uh, isn't posted. Uh, we'll see what else I need to add over time. Where are we? Mrs. Bun, how are you? Did it go well? Fantastic. Uh, it's well, that camera there. Thank you very much. Very much required. I started the day thinking that there was going to be, you know, not more than three or four hours worth of work to do, and then realised that I should do this, which has already taken, well, we're hitting two hours now. But we're nearly there. Where did you get to in the chat? Uh, up to date on Super Chats? I'm up to date on Super Chats. Absolutely. Yes. I think you were followed by a cat who wants in the door. Yeah. It's a tiger. Yeah. So we have three cats, and uh, Tiger is the nice one. Rocky is also nice, he's just old at this point. Uh, Tiger is, uh, is the nice one. Nico is the pretty one, but he's an arsehole, basically. Unless he wants food, in which case he's particularly nice to you until he's got food and then he it's becomes an arsehole. A, it's more of a passive aggressive niceness, he's like... <laughs> With an extra slice of aggressive. Emphasis on the word slice. Asking uh, what wood the base is. Uh, that. Oh, so it's no, it's got no audio, so I'll have to type it in the uh, chat. What wood is the base? Oh, he can't hear. Oh, okay, yeah, it's it's an ash body with a sapili uh, ash neck. Ash body. Sapili neck. Yeah, and an ebony fretboard. Ebony. Okay. Um, what did I see? Somebody was saying that they couldn't buy my builds. Uh, Doug Sachinella, I, we, I, um, 
if, if that if I'm not talking out of context, you can still commission me to build an instrument. It's just that, uh, uh, in general, I've come to, come to the conclusion that I, I, I really like I really like raffling builds off because it, uh, it absolutely just means that anybody anybody can have one really. Uh, but yeah, I'm not going to raffle every single thing off. Uh, but uh, yeah. Okay, three more to go, three more to go, and then we'll be there. Yeah, so while Tanya is here, uh, if you have any questions on guitar building or anything like that, um, yeah, please uh, chuck them in. Um, Matt said, thank you. Does Ben still have the other knob? <laughs> Hi, Matt. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh, yes, that Matt, uh, Cardiff Matt. Um, I didn't twig that that was the Matt who didn't have the audio. I absolutely do. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to use it for yet, but it's going to be something cool. Uh, Matt donated the control knob for the um, for the Star Wars guitar. Uh, Boba Fret that was it was actually delivered last week and uh, the uh, the new owner absolutely loves it. So uh, yes, and it ended up only needing the one knob, so I've kept the second. It's, and sorry, ha, context. He donated the knob. He is an extra and that was screen used on, uh, on Star Wars 9, which is the most recent one. Actually, I do have the room, it'll work. Because, uh, He's incredibly cool and generous and uh, pretty much indicative of the sort of people that tend to watch this channel and tend to be involved in guitars and guitar making in, in general. Um, we're all awesome people. Well, you are. So I've just discovered the least annoying way of doing this uh, noise-wise, and I'm on the penultimate mm. one. <laughs> so if I keep that here, it's supported and quiet, and just move the brass. It's actually relatively quiet. Paul, how do you? Says, ben, I know your views on Tonewood, but uh, do you have a view on, say, all Brightwood neck and body, all woodier ones, like, like mahogany neck slash body, or mixes thereof? Do I have a view on guitars made out of all Brightwoods or all woodier woods? <sighs> Let me preface this by saying I should have a great big button that says rant and just changes the lights behind me and no um, my my thoughts on tone and wood and uh, just how much it affects an instrument are still evolving and changing and I think that it's uh, 
it's healthy as an adult individual to change and grow as you as you age. Um, saying that, I don't think I'm ever going to be an actual grown up, but you know. Um, Look at me putting my goggles on. Throwing yourself to the fingerboard. Oh yeah, absolutely. This is the problem. Okay, um, so... I'm spending a lot more time playing other people's guitars now than I ever have before. And I am noticing certain things and... and uh, it's, it's one thing making a guitar and expecting it to do what you expect it to do. It's another to see what other people are doing and figure out what they're doing and how that is affecting the tone of the instrument. Um, let me just cut this last one out. Uh, so, so that being said, as I currently understand it, and as I currently believe to be the case, um, the wood does have an effect on how a guitar will sound, most certainly. Uh, but as I've said many times, it's not as big of an effect. Look at that, I didn't ping a single one of those across the room. It's not as big of an effect as many people think. Uh, it is a, a small, a relatively small percentage of what makes up the character of a guitar. Okay. So that being said, and believing that, then I'm not going to say that a woodier wood or a brighter wood is going to have a major effect on the overall sound of the guitar. You're talking about a subtle difference within a subtle difference. Um, however, uh, what we are what we always have to say is that uh, the, 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 the qualities of the timber have a very marked effect on the sustain of the guitar and how it rings out. And I believe that many people, when they think of tone, don't consider the sustain as part of tone. They're talking about the tonal color of the guitar and whether it's bright or, or thuddy or you know whatever you want to say. <sighs> Um, but the sustain is the thing. So if you have a, a guitar made out of all very hard, very bright uh, timbers like rock maple, etc., then you're going to have you know, a bright, ringy tone that sustains for ages. If you've got a, a, a woodier uh, instrument made entirely out of soft mahoganies, then yes, it will have less attack, it will have less sustain, uh, and a more jazzy thud is the wrong word, but that sort of a sound. So it, it will affect that. How much of that then gets transferred through the pickups and the wiring to the amp? That's actually the really big question here. Um, and yeah, it's fun. Um, M.A. Bushling has come through with a super chat. Says, you're awesome, Ben. Uh, that's why we all gather round to watch. That or we're all creepers. Take your pick. Thanks. Uh, I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. Okay, I'm going to tidy up my workbench. What do you guys think about tone and wood and all that? And uh, I, I had a... I had a... I had a discussion with a lecturer in acoustics at uh, one of the local universities, relatively local universities, I think it was Bournemouth. And this professor, we called him in and asked him to design an experiment to prove or disprove tone wood. And um, after working on it for six months, nine months, something like that, he came back and said, nope, can't do it. Can't prove or disprove it. It's, uh, uh, he says, I, as a scientist, absolutely know that it's basically hogwash, but uh, it's so difficult to do this 
empirically. So there we go. And as a guitar builder and as a maker, uh, sorry, as a business person, I should be turning around and, and saying, oh yeah, there's a magic thing and, uh, and I'm the only one who's got the secret and this is the magic thing and you have to buy my guitars to get this thing. But I don't do that because I, I, I kind of look like an asshole, so I really can't be one as well, you know. Uh, that was good. I'm happy with that. Is Crimson carry standard straight edges. I need a set of 12 inch and 18 inch for setup work. And they seem to cost an arm and leg compared to your not straight edges. Okay, uh, so standard straight edges are harder to manufacture. Uh, I am. We don't currently do a 12 inch. Could you let me know what you would, in setup work, you would use a 12 inch? Uh, straight edge four. I'm very interested in, in the use case of that because personally uh, I don't. I just use a standard um, longan. Uh, however, I am in the process of working out a deal with a top manufacturer in the UK of straight edges. In fact, my first ever straight edge, I did a lot of research and I bought it from these people. Uh, and I'm hoping to start stocking their work in our shop. And uh, yeah, a good straight edge is an expensive thing. Um, and we're charging about half what we should be for the notched straight edges, to be honest. Okay. Well, let's, let's have a look at what we've got going on here, shall we? What do you think? Oh, Tanya, I'd turn your microphone off, actually. There we go. Your mic's back on now. You wish you could shut me up. Uh, there is no <laughs> such thought in my mind, nor has if there ever there was a been. Button, eh? If only there was a button, don't. Uh... <laughs> Surely it's the other way around. I think out of the two of us, one talks a lot. Uh, the world knows. Okay, um, so this is what we've got. I'm running out, that's all cured. I don't want to hit this area with accelerator because I'm not sure what it would do to that finish and I don't want to experiment live. Um, I am, I'm gonna turn the guitar around so I'm filing from the outside in and uh, yeah, we'll figure it all out. Absolutely. That's from Jules. Hey Ben. Hey Jules, how you doing? Um, rock on so emoji. Thanks for the veneer trick with the crooked fret slots. Another rock on emoji. Cool. Uh, worked well in just before clear coat since package with vintage hand drill arrives soon. Excellent. Uh, yes, no worries. Uh, that's one of those things. It's one of the first mistakes many people make when building their own necks is a fret slot that needs to be refilled and recut. Uh, it happens on the regular. Okay, Stephen Clark's come back about the 12 inch. Yes. Said, 
uh, is used in guitars, you place it across the frets from the 1st to the 12th fret and use a 0 0.05 inch feeler gauge at the 6th fret to get neck relief. Okay, so you're talking on smaller acoustic guitars. Did you say acoustic guitars? Not specifically yeah. acoustic there, but... Okay. No, 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 I can see what he's talking about. Uh, yeah, I'd like to help you. I'd like to, to be able to sort that out, and I'm sure we could. Um, Tanya, could you make a note of that, and we'll actually add a 12-inch to our range. I'm looking for a file that I can't seem to find. Oh, here we go. Let's use one of the old uh, fret and finishing files. These things are I'm aware that I'm gonna end up having to sand and re-oil this fretboard a little bit. It says no electric. Electric, okay. Well, colour me surprised. Yes, I generally, I generally do setups by feel uh, rather than anything else. Where are we? Camera two, camera two, camera two. You, camera two. That one's a little bit high. I'm gonna to have to do that in stages. I really don't want to delaminate it. Okay. Did I hear mention of a thief of time build earlier? <laughs> so that's a... Uh, yeah. Tanya, have you finished listening to all of those books yet? Or do you still well, have a few more? No, I'll, I, you know, I think I'm halfway through. <laughs> I, I, I thought that you'd stop to sort of take, a, take a breather. I a bit because I was ordering too many... Because they're so long and I was using a lot of credits. So. I'm on one, one a month now. Okay. No, it's taking me a while to get through them. Uh, yes, I would love to do a Thief of Time uh, inspired build, but t uh, to be honest, if we're going down that route, it's. Well, Lord of the Rings was the plan, and then, uh, you know, Matey Boy did it for GGBO. What's his name again? A. We were talking about him two minutes ago. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it is, but we have watched it. Yeah. Yes. Dan Peacock. No, we're not there yet, son. <laughs> Nearly. I have actually I've stopped with the nasty noise now, and now we're just going with filing. Okay. Yeah. Will I freak out the Tonewood folks a lot with my Tone Plastic that's Frugal Fixer Guitars? Well, that's the thing. So, the fact of the matter is that whether or not you believe that wood has something to do with the tone, it does not automatically mean that you believe that nothing else can be used to make a guitar. And a lot of people do sort of assume that, and it's bullshit. You know, acrylic actually makes a really nice resonant sounding instrument with interesting overtones. It sounds great. 
you know, um, I built a Perspex bass for Golf Raps bass player a long time ago, and it, it's an amazing sounding, probably the best sounding bass I've ever made. Uh, heavy, even though I'd carved, a hell of, well, carved it a lot, but you know, other materials can apply and can work very well. Uh, Luther Bill's come back. Hey. Uh, Adair. Adair? Adair, there we go. Adair Guitars. Uh, yeah. That's yeah, the one. Actually. His video, his third video, has literally just uh, premiered. Wood for my guitars. Ooh. Uh, I've never had the pleasure. Absolutely gorgeous grain patterns. Yes. Uh, my favourite wood of all times is boxwood, uh, but not for guitar building just because I love it. Um, boxwood is. Well, uh, boxwood is what I made this little plane out of. Uh, during the uh, start of the hand tool build, um, and uh, yeah, that was uh, that was fun. Um, California Buckeye Burl, I love the look of. It's hard to get in the UK. Nice lightweight mahogany is just the thing, really. Uh, I think a mahogany guitar, a lightweight mahogany guitar, is just. Just that. Beautiful. <clears throat> now I'm being quite gentle and careful with this. If I hit it with a coarser file, I'm liable to actively rip out an inlay or two. So yeah, this is a this is a gentle file. And uh, it's taking a while, but it will be worth it. is relatively subtle. The brass. So we'll see. Paul Needs says, I seem to have struck a chord. All root and fifths, <laughs> by the look of it. I think that was yeah. a, a suggestion earlier about a, um, if you go a bit further. Uh, so Lord of the Rings of Star Wars, Discworld and Hitchhikers. Ah, uh, okay, Discworld, yeah. So Discworld, I'd have to do sort of Paul Kidby inspired something. Uh, I'd quite like to do a version of uh, of Oh, what was the little dragon called that Paul Kidby drew so so well? Um, but yes, uh, that could be cool. A wizard staff guitar based on the Discworld world or universe. Just a question of randomness, can you varnish over wax? No. Uh, number of productions of the dragon's called Errol. Errol, thank you. I knew it. I absolutely knew that somebody would be smarter than I am. I mean, it's not difficult, actually, really. But uh, yeah, I knew somebody would remember. Um, that's one of my favourite books. Okay, uh, no, you need to remove the wax, uh, uh, acetone or uh, denatured alcohol, something like that should do that, and then you varnish uh, after the fact once everything is uh, degassed, etc. Uh, a very old, very cured wax 
you might be able to shellac over the wax and then varnish, but I really wouldn't try it. Uh, with Discworld, the turtle and four elephants. There'll be a lot of carving. There'll be a hell of a lot of carving. Uh, yeah. Or a nice spray job. I'm sure somebody's done that before. That would be cool. Uh, I wonder about the legality. I wouldn't want to piss the Terry Bradshaw estate off. <laughs> Them people are scary. No. Um, We used to live not too far from Wincanton, where the, the sort of cunny artificer shop is, and they used to do all sorts of uh, events, and we went along a couple of years. This, I need to change the shots more often to something that's actually worth looking at that isn't my bounce. There we go. Whoops, come on. Uh, the shop is still there, it's just not open to the public. Uh, now the original uh, maker potentially has retired, I think. Um, he was making models, wasn't he? He was making models and site, yeah. yeah, now it's he's not doing that. But uh, the shop is still there, the online shop is, is going strong and they're doing a lot of online sales. Um, and they're developing with uh, with other makers and creatives. Um, we were uh, we were actually planning on doing some work with them ourselves uh, pre-COVID, and that sort of uh, well, due to COVID, we stopped talking. Um, but I suppose I need to go and have a further chat. Yeah, we. I was. Uh, we were talking about maybe using Crimson's uh, technology to manufacture um, and more pork coats of arms, but actually CNC'd out of real wood as opposed to cast resin and stuff, which uh, I think would look amazing. Where's my brush? Ooh, pear. Yeah, pear would be good. How am I gonna do those ends? All right. I'm assuming this is cured pretty much. Yeah, not quite. We're getting there. Let's see what we've got going here. Sapient Pearwood. Caleb O'Brien, uh, O'Brien sorry, says, anybody have interesting guitar pick material? I make wooden guitar picks around six to eight millimeters in thickness and looking for stuff to experiment with. Um, wow. 
Uh, I, I, ebony. <laughs> All of the traditional top and fretboard woods would make a perfect uh, plectrum, in my opinion. Yeah. I'm repairing a walnut gun stock. What finish should I use? I'm thinking about doing your penetrating guitar finishing oil, maybe shellac as a base coat. Uh, you have epic taste and uh, you are absolutely spot on. So the uh, our guitar finishing oil is is based on true oil, which is a gun stock oil. And uh, has been developed to be better than true oil, uh, in in my opinion, uh, at what we want to do. Uh, and yes, having a having a base coat of shellac underneath the oil really makes the whole thing pop. So yeah, I I agree with you wholeheartedly. I really do. And. Uh, uh, Tanya, would you mind passing me? There's a blue box of tools underneath a few boxes over there. A few boxes. Uh, <laughs> not a hundred, just just no. a few. Um, if we're talking about um, if we're talking about tools, somebody restoring guns. Good. Don't drop it. <laughs> yeah. Then this box of tools. That's a uh, Claro walnut, etc. Various gunstock parts. Some of my uh, some of my other older tools, just from the collection. I've got a full set here, or various full sets of gunstock checkering tools, which uh, recently entered my collection. And uh, yeah, there's some, there's some fun bits and pieces uh, for anybody interested in, in old tools in the first place and modern screws. And just, uh, yeah, some beautiful tools. And then of course we've got a, a surgical gouge designed and made to well, for surgery. Yum. Anyway, there we go. A digression. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind. There we go. Cheers. Just laying around here. Well, you know, I've been talking about doing a gunstock inspired tool for uh, for a while now. I'm just going to use this brush. Get out. Luther for Bill says, how much for the whole bin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot. Um, some of those tools, <clears throat> some of those tools will be going to the vintage tool shop and will be, will be up for sale at some point. Uh, I need to see what I've got and what duplicates there are. And I'm sure there are duplicates. Some of them are handmade. Some of them aren't that great. Some of them are incredible and epic, but I need to properly sit down and go through them. Uh, and see what I need to keep here because you know it wouldn't be fair if I had a vintage tool shop and didn't avail myself of the options. I, I think it's, it's okay to upgrade but I think there has to be a policy of some out when some come in. Well so this is the thing I, I have a set of gunstock checkering tools but there's um, there's all different widths so I've got 16 gauge or whatever it happens to be, and there's other ones there that are finer or coarser. So having a, a, a full set of a particular type of tool is one thing. Having duplicates, no need. So, yeah. Uh, 
Adam Palmer saying a dune build would be fab. Oh, I love that idea. I really do love that idea. Robert R says it's a long time since he's, since he's seen me working on this base. Uh, he'd forgotten it existed. <laughs> Not really. It's this is the least important of the of the builds, because it is it's not currently being edited live. It's not on the main channel yet. The series hasn't even started yet. It's not on auction yet. No, it's not raffle. It's not, not being raffled yet. Uh, it's all coming together. Okay. But this is going to be the first time I ever have a whole instrument finished, uh, other than one day builds, that isn't on the channel yet. So yeah, I'm I'm quite excited. Okay, this is a coarser, a coarser file, liable to do a little bit more damage to the fretboard as well. But I really don't want to touch, let's just mask that off just to, uh, just to be safe, shall we? Um, what do we have? Day day. Yeah, I need a piece of uh, that'll do. There we go. Nice box. Nice box, no more. Don't put the, yeah, just put the tool away where it belongs and then you won't lose it. Mayer's Guitars has just joined us and is asking... Who? Sorry? Mayer's Guitars. Mayer's? Mayer's? Mayer's, okay. Mayer's. I thought you said Mayones, which is a, a really a major <laughs> brand of guitars, which confused me for a second. Uh, this is I'm just now seeing this. What are you installing slash filing? Looks to be fretless, correct? Yes, fretless, and these are just uh, uh, some brass markers to uh, to accentuate exactly where the uh, fret positions are. Uh, yeah, make life easier for the player. It's taken a little bit longer than I'd hoped and wasn't necessarily the plan this morning, but hey, that's where we're at. It's not like you need to get sidetracked, is it? I prefer to say, realize there's an improvement to be made and get on with it, something like that. Still, we're nearly there. popping out because I went let it get too hot the whole time I've been saying I don't want to heat these things up too much that one was taller than it should be I've heated it up too much I've used two cores of a file and uh, and now I've lost it poopy poopy poopy
and we all thought I would, I'd, I'd sort of pass the point where I could fling one of these tiny little inlays across the room. You spoke too soon. I spoke too soon. Okay, let's just get these other ones. Lisa say, Lisa Harshberger saying, uh, tell Ben thanks for taking such good care of my base. <laughs> We are all going to feel so bad if she doesn't actually win it. <sighs> okay. Uh, now, the material's over here. We've got it. Try and find the one you've pinged off and start Oh gosh, no, hell no. <laughs> no, 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 no. It won't take long. It won't take long. Yeah, it's just a relatively small one in any case. So the problem was that I just made that one too big. And uh, yeah. And, of course, I'm a fool. Nice and flat. I think I even have some super glue left over on here that hasn't cured yet. There we go. Perfect. Eat in there. Goggles. Hammer. Finish is protected by the cardboard, so a dab of accelerator. Ask me questions, amuse me. Nudrit <sighs> Navid says hi, which is good. Hi, I just logged in. Greetings, Peter Crossley said, he 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 he, poop. Uh, yeah. I think the confusion was dead to death, thinking it's nine minutes to point. No, they still taper down to a point. Yes. No, I, uh, we're talking about these giant plectra. I believe so. Pl giant plectra. Plectrums. Well, Matt Tomlins just said, I'm off for a job interview. Have fun, all. Congratulations on getting the job in advance. Good luck. <laughs> good luck, good luck. Break uh, a leg. I hope it, I hope it works out. I'm not going to use that file anymore, that's far too coarse. Um, actually, here's something. <clears throat> I've never tried to use a, a sort of oval shaped or half round file uh, on this sort of a thing, but actually it could, if done properly, using a relatively, relatively flat edge, that could work quite well and reduce damage on the fretboard as we go. Or maybe, maybe it won't. We'll see. Uh, 
<laughs> Casey McDermott wants me to explain break a leg. It's a theatre thing, isn't it? Yes. When you go on stage, you don't, it's bad luck to say good luck, so you say break a leg. <coughs> Uh, it's, a very strange one. it's a strange one. It came. I can't remember the etymology of it, but I think there's a funny story behind it. Okay. Uh, it was it the Scottish play or something? I don't know. Oh, you're not. You're not allowed to say the word. You have to call it the Scottish play. It's bad luck to call it. That's, I mean, that's something different. That's something else. It's a, yeah. just another example of strange theatre folk. <laughs> Uh, and it's a strange or a theatre folk person, uh, yeah, you yeah, know. No, that just feels awkward. I need a flat. Let's try a crowning file, shall we? Ooh, look at that. That works. If you break a leg, you'll be in a cast. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see what I've got. Longer files. JS Trucking Guitars, do you want me to email you the recipe to make your own organic root beer? Huh. I'm interested what goes in root beer. I thought we've only had root beer. Please email it, but um, there's a certain thing that uh, Tanya and I are lacking. Uh, time. There, there, is, there is very, very little time. Uh, is it similar to making other things where you've got to be careful to blow yourself up? <laughs> when you're fermenting things, you can explode things, don't you? I've never, th I've literally never given root beer a second thought. So, uh, yeah. yeah. I'd love to try it. Yeah, absolutely. There we go. I thought somebody would know. Paul Need says break a leg originates from one breaking the curtain line with at least a leg, else you wouldn't get paid. That's really interesting. So if you don't go ahead of the curtains, you don't get paid as an actor? I'm still a little bit lost, but it sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. That's cool. There we go, another one. Uh, Madame Coast's workshop theatre folk here. The curtains on each end of the stage are called legs. Breaking a leg means you pass that curtain and are on stage for your performance. That's even cooler than I thought it was. Okay. So once I've got the brass down, then I'll be able to re-sand the fretboard and oil it. And that'll be fine. Uh, going with a, a levelling beam down that way when they were all uh, all high would be a, a recipe for disaster. It would be ripping masking, uh, ripping sandpaper and ripping inlays out of the, the body, etc. That's a relatively delicate process here. Uh, now, the most important thing is I need to make sure that I don't have any low spots uh, because I don't want low spots. Now I've just got to get these on the edge. There we go, technical question. Ozzy Eolin? Okay. Eolin, sorry. Um, maple neck and fretboard, but want to oil the neck, but possibly lacquer the fretboard to protect it from gunk. Will the oil from the neck seep under the lacquer 
or oil the fretboard too? Ideas. Uh, you need to you uh, even oiling the neck. Okay, stop. Rewind. Shellac. Apply coat of shellac across the whole thing. That will absolutely seal the the oil away from the fretboard, and then you can apply your lacquer uh, first and get the fretboard absolutely lacquered up and, and varnished or whatever you want to do, and then you go and you oil the over the shellac on the back of the neck. It will give you a very protective finish, more protective than just oil on its own, and uh, it would also stop any oil from seeping underneath through the wood and uh, going underneath the lacquer in any way, which isn't something that's likely to happen, although it is something that I have worried about in the past, as has other people. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a valid concern, shall we say. Um, <coughs> a valid concern. Much like all of you out there questioning my sanity. his workshop saying I finished my first kit build this weekend congrats has a horrid hum I'll be shielding the hell out of it during my lunch break today I was hoping I'd get away without it but no gotta do it yes the it, yeah I absolutely understand. Okay, um, there's a bit of an end here on on one of these where it's just poking up a little bit. I obviously didn't get super glue quite uh, enough in place. So I'm now looking for a box of... Uh, O3A adhesives. And the, the medium as it comes is actually fairly thin, but I'm just gonna just spooge. Ow. Guess what? That was very sharp. So it turns out that uh, I thought I had initially, I should have spent some time to actually consider. What I should have done, and what I want you guys to do if you ever do this again, is by all means start the cut with a saw at an angle, but then go in with a Dremel and a 0.6mm router cutter and route to the end of the hole so that you're inlaying a rectangular piece of material rather than a triangular shaped. Uh, the triangle ends up uh, with a very, very fine point, and the last thing you want to do is stick a very fine point of metal into your finger as a musician. Kinda, maybe. Sort of. Think you, think you agree with that one? <sighs> this should work now. Okay, Paul Needs says, uh, so is color stain, color stain, then shellac, then a nice oil over the top, the optimum, short of a sprayed whatever. Um, shellac isn't necessary, so, I love shellac, it's high build, it's natural, it gives a good finish. Yes, shellac will rip some of the stain off, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, uh, it, it's just par for the course. Generally, I would go color and then just apply an oil. If you need a higher build, then that's a different story. Um, yeah, up to you. Okay.
I'd better finish this instrument today. I, basically, basically at this point, if I start releasing a new series of builds before the hand tool only build is finished, I will have a riot and a mass unsubscribe and I, I just can't cope with the rejection that that would imply. I can't release this as a series until the hand tool build is done. So, at this stage, or at least well underway again. And I'd, I'd like to just finish the hand tool build. So it's going to be two or three weeks, four weeks, maybe seven. I've got to crack on with the hand tool build. Uh, but as soon as we... What I'm planning on doing is, is getting the videos edited, knowing exactly how many of them there will be, shed scheduling the raffle so that it ends, um, say two weeks after the final video or a week after the final video, something like that. And we'll have proper photos of the finished base, etc. We're doing the whole thing properly for once. Um, but uh, yeah, it'll still be, it'll still be, it'll still be a little while off, I'm afraid. Casey, thank you. Ben, I'm now recovering from the shame of buying a small drum sander after the chat last night. I saw no way around it. I blame you. <sighs> I, I apologise, but uh, you are correct. Yes, uh, there was absolutely no way around it. Uh, we were talking in the Q&A live stream about... Oh, various possibilities, but uh, the interesting one was uh, basically a, a, a bearing on top of a drum sander style drum that fits in a pillar drill. Uh, but Casey was like, I don't want drills, no drills. And uh, yeah, the option was either that in a pillar drill or, uh, you know, a Triton oscillating spindle drum sander thingy. <sighs> yeah. And that's it. It's incredible how inexpensive they actually are nowadays in comparison to the available options when I first started. You guys are so lucky. There were not, I sh seriously, there weren't options like this. Uh, it was a, you know, essentially a light industrial machine or nothing. Uh, and nowadays these are just, yeah, available. I envy you. I've just finished my build. I just cannot make my ebony fretboard shiny enough. Please help. Okay. Um, buffing. So, even if you're using guitar finishing oil uh, or something like that, you 100% get yourself a a bench grinder with a pigtail attachment or get a pigtail attachment for your bench grinder and um, you need a a loose leaf cotton unstitched loose leaf cotton buffing mop and uh, use a, a sort of very very fine polishing compound maybe a, a white polishing compound something like that um, and even without that, literally just wax, come to think of it. So you've got your oil on your fretboard. Um, I would then, 
if you need to sand through the grits, go up to use micro mesh even or use super fine fret rubbers on the on the ebony in between all of the frets to polish that up to, to a fine sheen in the first place. And then a polishing compound like the, the Crimson Super Ultra Mega Versatile polishing compound, for example, uh, on the loose leaf mop and then buff it on the machine and you will end up with a glass-like surface over time. You can also do the same thing utilizing uh, more than a few coats of Renaissance microcrystalline wax and a buffer. Two options for the price of one. Okay, super chat here from Lisa Harshberger. Lisa, howdy. I am willing to film a short video explaining why my base videos are airing before the hand tool build. <laughs> hand tool only build. People will understand. Uh, Uh, Lisa says Sue Gardner uh, built a drum sander, should be on YouTube, it is, yeah, she built a, a homemade sander thickness, so it's a slightly different thing. Uh, we're talking about the vertical drum sanders where the oscillating spindle sander goes up and down. Um, but uh, yeah, Susie built a, uh, a sander thickness, which is another machine, well, which is a machine that actually there are not inexpensive options available. Um, they really aren't. Has Susie started up her YouTube channel again? She really needs to. She showed up in the chat on one of uh, one of our live streams at some point, but uh... can somebody? Can somebody in the chat go and find out, see if Susie Gardner has put up any videos? I'm just having a look, actually. Tony's also having a look. Um, I wonder if I've got her number. A distraction, hold on. Oh, that's like a couple of years ago. Okay. Um, could you, could you, Tanya, ask, send Tom a message and ask him for Susie's uh, number? I'm sure he's got it somewhere. I would love to ask her if she wants to be, if she wants to uh, do the uh, invitational GGBO. Okay, I'm getting to the end of this. This really should have been done prior to um, finish, etc. But it's almost never too late to improve a build. Thank you. 
Uh, question from Navid. Hi. Hey Ben, can we use a flexible hard glass rods as fret? Uh, wouldn't it have a much smoother bend? Uh, there was a company who made frets out of crystal, uh, so sapphire crystal sort of thing, uh, which is something that you can grow in a lab, etc. And technically, technically, yes, I'm sure you could. Um, but the reality of the, the real, reality is that grinding grinding glass frets down to to get them absolutely perfectly flat which is required for a, a, a well set up guitar or ensuring that they are installed absolutely perfectly flat it's a it's a problem um, It's overcomplicating things for little real gain. A good quality nickel silver stainless steel or um, hypoallergenic fret when polished up and um, crowned etc properly is as shiny, as soft, as smooth and as playable as you would get with a a glass or a crystal fret. Um, so, so yes, there's no reason to do that. There's no reason to create all of the chaos and carnage and added uh, possibilities to do that. But uh, the biggest issue I've got is uh, your, your question actually said flexible glass. That doesn't exist, um, period. Uh, glass is crystalline, it would have to be installed hot uh, in order to get it to the right... It would either have to be made with a perfect radius on it or installed hot. And as much as I would really enjoy messing with molten glass on a guitar, I shit you not, I would really enjoy that. Um, it just wouldn't be precise enough. So you would have to then use diamond lapping plates and things to level the, the frets and the polishing, the crowning, the whole process would, would be an absolute nightmare. Could be interesting, but uh, yeah, uh, not practical, shall we say. It's not often I get questions that absolutely, uh, yeah, we get a lot of questions that are the same sort of question or the same idea in you know, various forms. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a new one on there. Okay, that that one just wanted to stay poked up, so uh, uh, I've just pushed that down, and I'm putting some super glue over the top. Ross Goodley says, "Has he never handled glass fiber?" Um, I have handled glass fiber, and uh, it's far too tiny for frets. Too thin. And not hard enough. But yeah, too thin. Unless I am completely missing something. What time is it? It's two o'clock. Is it really? Wow, we've been going for over three hours just on this silly little part of this job. <sighs> okay. So while that little bit of super glue cures, I'm gonna 
go in very carefully. I'm using my knuckle here as a depth stop to guarantee that I don't go um, beyond any further down than I want. Any questions? Yeah, uh, one back here from a while ago, Caleb O'Brien. Caleb. Another question, sorry, but there no. is a problem with my strat. I installed strap locks and the screw is bigger than the original screws. Yeah. The button end on the horn spins out and doesn't tighten. Uh, literally just stick a cocktail stick or a toothpick or the end of a match in there and screw away. Your hole is a little bit too big. Um, uh, yeah. It's, uh, you can glue it in if you, if you feel the need to, but it's probably not necessary. Uh, so yeah, cocktail stick or a match. Uh, cut off to size and you'll be away. And you'll be away. Toby D says, do you think you could see and see a neck like the one you used on Bubba Fret in wood? Would that work? No. It wouldn't work. We can see and see it, but it wouldn't be. Uh, it would not be strong enough or stable enough. Uh, the the intonation point at the top of each fret would disintegrate at literally the first playing. Um, even if you use something like ironwood or uh, whatever, I mean, basically any wood uh, would disintegrate uh, unless you're using nylon strings potentially would work uh, but even that even that would cause issues uh, now I am perfectly uh, we would be capable of machining that out of uh, steel or aluminium and hard anodizing it etc please come back you said I mean the fretboard yeah no I realized yeah, yeah. Um, no basically it wouldn't be strong enough it has to be done. Even so, they they released uh, Bond guitars released two different types over the period uh, of fretboards. Uh, some were machined aluminium that were then hard anodized and uh, and were good. And that's the one that I used on that build. And the other type was a resin fretboard that they cast essentially, I, I assume. And uh, even those were not hard enough and wore too rapidly. They were, they were apparently designed so that you could take the fretboards off and just replace the fretboards. But that was, yeah, folly. Folly, I tell you. <sighs> Sorry, I don't know what comes over me sometimes. Problems. Navid says, um, Ben, can you try to construct a guitar neck with stainless steel tubing? Yes. Um, looking at you is not helping. Remind, tell me the name. Of what? The company. You have no idea who it is. No. sorry. <laughs> Come on, people, let me know. Who is it? Um, Gitler. Gitler, look up Gitler guitars, G-I-T-T-L-E-R, uh, that's the one. And uh, as Mark likes guitars and stuff says, hit like people. Uh, so Gitler guitars, uh, uh, I think they are still in existence. I saw them before lockdown. Uh, I think they were exhibiting at NAMM. Uh, their neck is made out of several, uh, several tubes. Um, and the frets are installed. It looks like a ladder. It's an incredible looking instrument. Um, there is almost nothing new under the sun.
Ross Goodley got in there with Gittler. Where are we? Let's actually get a bit of a close-up of this particular task happening. Camera 2 does not want to stay put. Hold on. Ah, that's the issue. Question there from Dave T. Yeah. Um, Did you read it? Yep, ask away. I wonder with these brass fret markers whether that will affect slash change the sound slash tone when fretting over them <laughs> in comparison to fretting on the wood. Your thoughts? Uh, far too subtle. Um, unless they, unless the timber shrinks. That's not going to happen. So I'm just rounding over the edge of the fretboard gently here. And there we go. Okay, so, so yeah, there we go. Uh, I'm pretty much there on this. It was a, a big task that wasn't actually planned. I now need to and I need to sand the fretboard uh, or fingerboard. Don't have frets now, does it? And uh, I go for that. Uh, now, with regards to the different sound as you fret over, no, I, I really don't think it's going to make any difference. Um, in reality, it's a very, very, very subtle line. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't think anybody's going to notice that your your strings are already metal uh, for for what that's worth. Okay. Okay, that one's poking up a bit. This might be a problem. Most of them are absolutely fine. Yeah, that's... Is that the one that I just re-glued? Or just glued in? It is, you know. I probably should have re-sawn that slot. Artissimo, uh, invitational contestants, uh, I'm still trying to finalise, I'm still trying to finalise, so uh, it'll be a while, it'll be, it'll be a little while on that. Um, it's very hard to get in touch with some people and we're trying to, I'm actually thinking about extending the, um, the date uh, at which that part of the competition will end. 
uh, so that it will guarantee a few more interesting people. <sighs> GGPO. Mm. I love it, but it is the bane of my existence, seriously. Um, Quite full on, isn't it? It's, there's a lot to do. It's, it's just, it's just, there is physically far too much to do. Uh, but we'll get there. Question from Dimitri. I'm sorry, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to pronounce the S at the end of Dimitri. Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. Ben, what laser engraver slash cutter would you recommend for more complicated inlays? Have you ever used one? Uh, yes. I don't know the brand name of the one we currently use at Crimson, but if you send an email through uh, to uh, office at crimsonguitars.com and ask the same question of Sam, he will be able to give you uh, the details you need. But uh, yeah, essentially we've got a... <laughs> I adjusted my truss rod like a tenth of a turn and then put my, put my straight edge down on top of the nut and suddenly I had a, an eighth of an inch gap which scared the crap out of me. What the hell is happening here? Um, there we go. This is the sort of stuff that doesn't normally make videos. Perfectly flat. I adjusted it absolutely perfectly. Okay. Cameron Gore's asking, do you have any tips on getting a flat back to your plane blades? I've just got some new diamond stones, but I'm having trouble getting the blade back flat. <sighs> got a video on that? I do have videos on sharp, uh, yeah, sharpening plane blades, etc. Um, I don't understand. Yeah, it's essentially, it's literally just a case of sitting there. If it's not flat, you want to be working with your coarsest grit stone. Um, a permanent marker across the, uh, across the back of it so you can see what you're doing. It sounds to me like there's something more at play. It may honestly be that the plane blade is flexible and you are flattening and then it's going back. You're flattening under pressure, so you're pushing down, working away, and then as you relieve the pressure, uh, the curve comes back in. Check and see if that is what is happening. Uh, if not, it's literally just a case of you have to put in more time uh, and be aware, be aware that you're not rocking as well. Is the thing. He says there's a huge hollow in the back and it seems like the more I try to flatten the back of the blade the worse it gets. Mm. Hollow. Is it touching, is it flat along the cutting edge? If it's flat along the cutting edge that's all you really need to worry about. But uh, yeah, uh, Potentially put it masking tape and super glue it to a to a piece of wood and then uh, go the other way. I have with particularly troublesome uh, tools. I have ended up using a a belt grinder to grind stuff away. Um, so yeah, you can you can see the evidence of that uh, on the back of things like this. Um, so, so yeah, it's, I don't know, that's not a problem I've ever heard of, uh, 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 um, yeah. Okay, so, so that's good.
I'm being very careful as I go up to the, uh, the nut. Uh, it's a fender style nut, so I'm not gonna knock it out, but I may well shatter it if I go, if I go wrong. And, uh, and even though I don't want to remove, I don't need to remove any material from the treble side, uh, I do want it to be an even curve across. So it's all, yeah, it's all good. The most recent super chat is still Lisa talking about uh, being willing to film a short video about uh, you know, just explaining why <laughs> her base is uh, taking precedence. Yeah, that works. That's nice. Dave T says, brass fret markers aside with the bridge pickup, sorry, my doing, and the P-Bass pickups uh, where they are placed, this will be a unique instrument and that's a good thing. Uh, I agree, thank you very much. It's a, it's, yeah, it's gonna be cool. Pretty much there. good. I'm going to have to go up to the house and wash my hands shortly. Well, I'm going to have to go do this school run any minute now. Yeah, it's a pity, but I suppose we do need to pick the child up really. It's important that we keep them. All right, so off to a, a finer grit. Bye, and see you again soon, I think. Yes, well, thank you very much for coming and joining us. Um, it does, it's a different atmosphere when we've actually got another person here. Um, oh, that's what I'm looking for. The end of the sandpaper was not, was not playing ball. Um, children. Yes. OK, 
Okay. Bye, guys. Have a um, nice afternoon, morning, evening. Did I stop talking halfway just, through a sentence there? You sort of trailed off a little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> I uh, Yeah, too many things going on. Uh, drive safe. I will see you shortly. Okay, uh, Patrick Nesbo says, yesterday I asked about finishing options. You said that I could use shellac with oil over it. Uh, could you elaborate? Uh, yes, yeah, shellac as a base coat. Shellac is a finish that works well with pretty much any other finish. Uh, it is, it can be used underneath varnishes and waxes and oils. And it can also be used very nicely uh, as an interstitial uh, thing, um, as an interstitial finish between various finishes that normally wouldn't go well together. And um, uh, that's the thing. So I, and shellac has a very nice color. So yeah, shellac underneath oil gives a particularly beautiful sheen. It's also higher build. So uh, yeah, a couple of coats of shellac, flatten it down. It could be used as a grain filler, etc. It's just one of those things. It goes well. Ian Davies coming with a super chat, uh, knocking Lisa's question off the uh, top spot for now. Um, what is the fastest curing oil style finish you do at Crimson? Uh, the high build oil is probably your baby. Um, yeah, high build guitar finishing oil, basically. The, the best way to do that finish, well, the way to use that finish is to apply it, leave it to cure for 10 minutes or so until it starts going tacky on the guitar and you can feel your finger starting to drag as you run your finger through it. And then, um, <clears throat> uh, and then you rub all of the excess off and leave the guitar to, to sit for, um, in a nice warm workshop, about six hours or so will be should be fine, and then you can do the next coat. Um, now the initial, actually, I take that back. The initial application, you can do two or three coats in one shot, but always rub off all of the excess as you go. Okay, I'm getting there. I think there was a scratch in that. I'm being careful to remove even amounts along the whole fretboard. I think we should be okay now. Okay. Vegans don't like shellac, however. Well, it's used in uh, about a billion products that they need to survive, so I'm sure they'll just have to figure it out. Uh, he says being flippant. Uh, yeah, so the that's it's it's just one of those things. Uh, there's no alternative, is there now? We good. So I've just gone over to a 600 grit paper now.
600 grit wet and dry I'm applying it dry Stephen Cosell says bye Mrs. Mrs. Byrne Rene Montayo, I think I got that right, says uh, wooden resonance, how about tongue slit drums? Uh, they're acoustic. So uh, yes, uh, the, the whole argument against or for tone wood etc is to do with tone wood within a solid body uh, electric instrument. When it's when it's an acoustic instrument, you absolutely have um, the evidence there. The tone is very much down to the wood, but in an electric guitar, um, you're adding magnets and wires and amplifiers and pickups and polarities and capacitors, and you're adding a whole bunch of stuff to the uh, to the mix that ah, the confuses matters greatly greatly I tell you um, okay so I've done 600 grit there I'm actually gonna go one step further because I can So there's some 2000. What else do I have? There you go, 1200 is what I'm after. So there's 1200. Actually, let's get the 2000 as well. Patrick Nesbitt says, I have an old ESP Explorer body that I would like to have a copy of. How would I go about ordering a body that has the same shape and dimensions as my ESP? <coughs> if it needs, to, uh, you can send us a drawing. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, if you need to, you can draw a physical drawing around it, take all of the dimensions and send that to us as a piece of paper, and we will then digitize that. Um, or if you have the... Um, the software etc uh, we can you can send us a digital version of it and uh, and we can do that uh, we could probably work from a good photo as well if we have references i.e um, it needs to be perfectly square perfectly uh, photographed from above etc so uh, yeah we can do that as well but uh, your best bet is to talk to Sam at uh, Crimson, and uh, we can crack on. We can, uh, yeah, he can talk you through the various processes for achieving that. Okay, so now this 1200 grit is not removing very much wood, I'm just burnishing the top surface. And also polishing the fret ends. No, the fret ends. Ha! The inlays. Jamie Krakramer forgot about this one day build. <clears throat> I 
and there's apparently a conversation going on about uh, vegans and bees and stuff. I do love how this community has... Uh, Oh, it's just really interesting what gets talked about in the chat. Okay, that's 1200. And I dropped my 2000 grit. Dave T says, uh, Ben, what are your thoughts on using tongue oil as a finish, please? Uh, tongue oil is a great finish. It's, uh, uh, I think, vegan, actually. Uh, it's natural and uh, very cool. So, yes, I like it. It takes... Uh, the tongue oil that I have experienced takes a long time to, to cure. There are various other versions or options available, and I'm actually looking into those because it's something that I like the sound of. Big being all natural etc so uh, yeah it's uh, something i'm considering adding to the crimson guitars lineup in the not too distant future now what i've got here is a raw ebony fretboard and uh, very carefully because i don't want too much oil to go onto the uh, body or anything like that I'm going to apply some high build guitar finishing oil and uh, yeah, I'm going to crack on. Now the thing is I'm going to apply it very lightly with some tissue. I don't want huge amounts, I'm not going to splooge it everywhere and I'm going to uh, buff it in with the 2000 grit wet and dry paper essentially creating a, well, a slurry of, yeah, it's going to be interesting. So not very wet. This is picking up the dust. It's going to protect the the brass inlays from oxidizing to a certain extent. Let me just move, uh, get camera three over here. Tony Baxter wants to know why zero freights aren't used more. Uh, essentially, it's uh, uh, it's a little bit more expensive. Uh, most guitars are are manufactured by companies doing things as cheap as le cheaply as humanly possible, and with a zero fret, you need both a uh, another fret and a nut. So, while that doesn't seem to us like it's going to add a huge amount of expense an extra two or three pennies across a million guitars does actually add up quite a lot so there's that but there's also the fact that that fender martin and gibson don't use them 
and didn't use them very much, if at all. And therefore, um, people think they just don't look very cool. Uh, I don't like the look of them. Uh, technically, it is a, potentially a better instrument, uh, but yeah, it's not great. This ebony dust is getting up my nose, and then of course I go and scrape my nose and get even more. Anyway, 2000 grit. And I'm essentially buffing the oil into the fretboard. Forcing it to cure a little bit more. This is a way to get a really, really, really nice finish. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work as well over a stain because you do tend to bring the stain up. Okay. More oil. Always make sure to put a cap on your oil before you go. These things do get knocked over. Um, it's never ideal when that happens. And I'm just going to go and find some even finer wet and dry paper. I hope I have some. <laughs> no, I appear to be peaking at about 2000 grit. That surprises me. Sure, I had uh, some more here. All right, well, there we go. Yep, there we go. So I found some two and a half thousand grit paper, and that's my uh, that's me done. Okay, so that looks a little bit rough at the moment. Huh. 
but when we buff off the excess We're starting to get a pretty cool finish. Okay. Huh. Oh, here we go. Uh. <coughs> Elfie, Elfie Shine Resin Enriched 100% Natural Hard Wax Polish. This stuff is cool. I'm just going to put a little bit on here. Because I been talking about wax so much today in the chat. Uh, Rene says it's going to sound, uh, feel velvety. Uh, we're talking about uh, there's a lot of stuff we're talking about at the moment. Still what is or isn't vegan. That fretboard looks like a Victorian scientific instrument. It looks amazing. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I have no idea how to pronounce your name. Y-V-E-S, Eves, maybe? No, I was about to go wolf piste. I was about to go absolutely, totally off the rails. Uh, we were talking about, uh, earlier we were talking in the chat about buffing an ebony fretboard using a, a, a bench grinder and a loose leaf mop polishing compound, etc. I could do that, but with this instrument, <laughs> would a high gloss fretboard really look in place? No, it just wouldn't. <laughs> So, uh, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm really happy with how this has turned out. Really happy indeed. Um, and uh, yeah, I need to get that out of the way. Yeah. <sighs> Fine. Questions, queries, comments, criticisms, um, please send them all through. I'm going to tidy this workbench up. I need to pop up to the house for a minute, uh, grab some peanuts or something, and uh, but I will not be long. Beth was born and bred in Scotland. 
Uh, Patrick Nesbo says, Crimson Guitars Guitar Building Simulator. When are we getting it? <laughs> yep, that is something that I would very much like to have on the website. Uh, that is one of the one of the many things that we're going to be having to work on in the not too distant future. Things are changing and growing. The, the, the problem is that the company just keeps on getting, um, I don't want to say bigger. It's not like we're doing uh, huge amounts of, of anything really. We've just got lots of little things going on, shall we say. And lots of little things means lots of chaos. It would almost be better if it was all just focused on one product or one service. <sighs> that being said, I tend to overcomplicate things, so here we are. Um, I would like a simulator on the uh, on the website, if only for even if it was only for kit guitars. <coughs> but uh, yeah, we'll get there. Oh, Lisa. Okay, uh, where's my hook? I'm going to put a hook back in the back in the instrument here. Hang her up, and come back. So we are now four hours into a live stream, and uh, after four hours of this live stream, I have returned back to an instrument that's in the same state it was at in the beginning, i.e., ready for hardware and strings. Uh, we needed. I needed to install. Uh, markers to tell the musician exactly where each fret was because this morphed into a, uh, a fretless instrument and from the side and the front you need to know exactly where the actual intonation point is. Uh, I've installed some brass shim stock and uh, well it's gone all right. I do believe it has. Come on then let's uh, hang this beastie up and we will see what happens. Uh, Come on. Camera, I should have moved the camera first. Camera, tripod. Do, 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 do. <sighs> this computer should not be in an environment like this, really. No oil on there. Wolf of Guitar says, as a company, you seem to be in constant growth flux, growth slash flux, which is always a bit hairy. It seems you have finally get into grips with it. You are absolutely right. Honestly, and I wish I'd done this a long time ago, the, the, the moment that has really, in my mind, fixed everything was I sat down and said, all right, uh, what... what is the structure that we're going to need? And I just drew out a flow diagram of who, what positions I would need to fill at some point. Do we need a web developer? Yeah. Do we need a workshop manager? Hell yes. Um, do we need a full-time packing? Is somebody packing two people, three people packing? Do we need somebody working in advertising and sponsorship stuff and all that? And it's like, actually, no, this role we won't need. No, this role we won't need. But actually, We've never really considered it, but somebody in this role would mean that these people can then go and fix and work on other th things. And uh, I'm not saying, hey, we're, we're hiring a million people, but uh, we are creating the roles and working towards having people in certain roles. Uh, a research and development department, we've always needed one. We've got hundreds of tools that we need to add, but we've never had any one person or two people just focused on that. And, and that's we could be a much bigger, much more successful company than we are right now if, if I'd managed to do those things. But also, well, maybe we would lack soul, like some of our other competitors. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Rene is saying flat ones, tape ones, string gauge and tuning. I have got some strings uh, just uh, round wound. I've got I've got round one and round one because it was going to be fretted originally, 
and uh, I'm going 40 to 100 gauge uh, rotos for now, and we'll see how it goes. How it goes. Uh, yeah. So that's the plan. And tuning is just uh, standard traditional four string uh, EADG. That is four strings, yes. <laughs> Jamie. Ooh, shots fired. I'm not wrong. Am I wrong? I don't think I'm wrong. Um, Dave, Dave's asked me to cling film the computer. Very good point. Uh, Dave T says, Ben, what is your favorite plane in your collection and why? Me being a bass player, mine is the astral plane. <laughs> um, this is an absolutely gorgeous little Bill Carter plane. Camera two, camera two. Camera two will do it. And uh, you can see the dovetails in there have got little sweetheart um, things. Ultra ti tiny mouth. It's made out of bronze uh, by Bill Carter himself. It's got the sweetheart detail on there. And I traded a Stanley number one with Bill himself for this plane because he wanted a number one and I wanted one of his planes. Um, and uh, for me, oftentimes it's, I mean, the plane itself is absolutely gorgeous and you've seen me use it and I use it a lot and it is incredibly well made. It's just lovely. Uh, at the time he was selling these for about one and a half thousand pounds. And at the time the standing number one was going for about 700 pounds. I was more than happy <laughs> getting this at half price. Um, and in reality, I had bought the standing number one at trade uh, and had probably only paid about 400 pounds for it. So uh, basically, beautiful plane. Amazing tool that I would love even if I had paid full price for it, but the fact that I got it for a bargain makes it just that much more sweeter. Um, so there we go. Uh, anyway, look, I need to, I need to shoot off up to the house, it has been four hours, five minutes and 21 seconds. Uh, and there has been two cups of coffee and a cup of tea in that time frame. Uh, I also need to grab some peanuts or something to eat quickly because it's three o'clock. Um, I will be back shortly. Uh, you guys chat amongst yourselves, find some questions and bits and pieces. I'll answer some questions uh, when I get back and then we're going to crack on and start installing hardware in the space because I do want to get her, I do want to get her finished. So yeah, back shortly. Making sure to turn that microphone off.
to fear the Luthiers here. What a pretentious a-hole. Alrighty. Hi. Hi. Hi, 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 hi. We're back. Um, I just grabbed a quick sandwich, some peanuts. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave the, the lapel mic off just for a second while I munch that down. And uh, we go from there. Uh, George Davis is in agreement with Lisa saying we all need to make a pact that if any, if any of us win the base, we will give it to Lisa Harshberger. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I would be happy to, to build one on commission, uh, but hey. Uh, so Ryan, the lighter parts of the uh, inlay are not now glow in the dark, it's just super shiny brass. <clears throat> are you sure those intonations will be perfect? Tim Sway set his up and verified the tones first. Uh, it's where they're supposed to be. They are where they're supposed to be. Mr. J asks, why are so few bass guitars made using an angled headstock? Are Fender just so dominant in the market? Pretty much, I mean, they invented the electric bass, for one, but uh, yeah, it doesn't need an angled headstock, therefore people don't go to the extra expense to do it, really. Hmm. <laughs> Rabnox appears to see what I, what's happening just as I leave to run up to the house and grab some food quickly. Um, anyway, okay. <clears throat> Do you employ the older human? Question mark. Computer graphics, pre-press and web design, etc. Yes, we do employ older humans. Elder. <laughs> Drop us an email. Um, we are fairly well stocked with humans at the moment. Um, I could do with a few more puppies about the place, I suppose. But uh, but another. But yeah, drop us a line. Seriously. Okay, now I'm, the whole thing just shooshed and I missed a bunch of questions. Sorry, George, you're right. Casey, Talitha is not allowed in the workshop when I'm not here anymore. Quick, squirrels, go hide something. You guys are awesome. Um, okay, a bunch of talk about weather, being efficient. Who got taken for what, Jamie Krakramer? I'm out of context. It would be funny if we had remote control squirrels that could walk around, but... Uh, you guys are you guys are mean in general. Yeah, 
generally. Uh, I need to fix number four. You're not doing too well. That's about right. Okay. Hey, Kareeva Rai, how are you doing? No worries, done. I've been doing a lot of work on the frets, but we're sorted. Uh, the, the fret markers. Jamie, no, I don't always use wax over the oil finish. I tend to do it when I've... Hold on, my phone's jurying at me. Sorry, this is... My son. <clears throat> He's asking me for a game. What has he asked for? Ah, there we go. So I have complete control over what they have on their devices. Um, because the world's insane. But anyway, and they're young still. Hmm. Yeah, Andre, it definitely qualifies as a brass instrument now. <clears throat> this year's crop of humans was pretty good, Jamie. In, in all seriousness, in all seriousness, in the last six months, maybe eight months, I have managed to employ more top shelf people of the kind of people that I've wanted to work with forever than in any other similar period in Crimson history. Seriously, incredible. Um, and I, I think in the end it was telling the people who do the book. Basically, I, I made the decision that I would much rather hire based on personality and uh, oh, I basically said no more rassals. And it's, it's, I don't care how talented you are, if you're a bit of a dick, you're not coming in. And that's uh, surprisingly made a big difference. Now, Dreyas Trucking Guitar says, which email do you want me to send that root beer recipe to? Stream, Guild, Office, or to your Instagram? Definitely not my Instagram. I haven't, I, mm. um, stream at crimsonguitars.com uh, is the best bet for now. Okay. I'm starting to get more human. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I am diabetic and uh, uh, I need constant feeding, um, which is a, an issue when you're doing live streams but uh, anyway here we are let's see what is happening yo we're good uh, Lisa Harshberger 
Lisa Hoshberger says, Ben, if I could afford to commission a bass from you, I wouldn't a heartbeat, but I'm a caregiver for my parents, which is why I dream of winning by spending a few bucks on a raffle. I adore your work. Um, if karma has anything to say with it, um, you will win. But, uh, yeah, as much as I would like to uh, oh, forego the competition and just say, hey, here you go. Um, that's not how it works, unfortunately, anymore. Um, interestingly, I had to explain to Orson yesterday, he, he purely, he thought that the concept of karma was entirely negative. For some reason, he'd got it into his head that um, if you do bad things, bad things will happen to you, but he never got the other side of the coin. And... Uh, yeah, that was uh, that was interesting, but uh, yeah, Lisa. Seriously, I hope I do hope that you win. Um, okay, Mr. Waffles. Speaking of pencils, I've just had my I've had my graph gear for six months or so, and just noticed that the whole tip retracts. Two weeks ago. So. You are a particularly unobservant individual. Or you just didn't care about your pencil enough. I don't know. Anyway, okay, main microphone is on. Roof mic is off. We're back. We're somewhat fed. Let's see what goes wrong next, shall we? Um, all right. Um, I don't even know where to go from here. Where's that neck rest? There's that neck rest. If you have any questions, I will go for it. Words to live, baby, from Wilford Guitars. He meant to say bye. Now that I'm done with my GGBO build from George Davis, he says, I think I'll make a case for it. That's something that I haven't yet done, and I really do need to. <laughs> Dakariah says, ah, it's already past three. I'll just go and see the finished base. Ben will have completed it by now. There is no way that he's still working on. Boy, was I wrong. I'd, it's improved. It has improved. It's done. We're, we're better now. Okay. There's a peanut. Where's my bridge? So, I don't have a handy centre line, <laughs> and the bridge is a little bit dusty actually. Forward a bit. 
That should be about right. <clears throat> okay, so I've, I've checked the scale length. I've roughly put it in place by uh, seeing where the strings would line up. I'm now looking at the uh, at the pickups and uh, just having a look and see where those go in relation to the bridge. Life tends to be a little bit easier if you have a centre line. There we go. That's square. That's square. You can go forward a tad. Do you actually have room? There we go. There we go. Okay. Now, just to double check, I'm going to take some masking tape and uh, Instead of eyeballing it, which is what I generally do, I'm going to put some masking tape here where the centre of the string should be in between where I've got the bridge and the nut. And then using the other side of the ruler, run that down the centre. Now it's not going to stick for long because we've just waxed this. But in reality, where it counts, I'm pretty much spot on. Let's go with the fret 7 and the fret 7, or the position at least. So that bridge is where I need it to be. Uh, center point. Don't let me forget the ground wire. Okay, so I've got those marked. <laughs> Whew. Time to make some progress, yo! I don't know why I said, said it like that. I, uh, I, I regret many things. I, I apologize. I am not, nor have I ever been, cool enough to speak like that. Okay. Might not be cool, but I am currently using a very cool little brush. I think it might be a typesetter's brush or something like that uh, to, you know, dust off my bridge. So, you know, there is that. OK. 
Okay, ground wire, what's that? That's from Tim Beaton. Um, Lisa's already mentioned the ground wire. Uncle Duncan's shaft is saying ground wire. Uh, the all of no return. Oh, Dave, Dave, I love that. Oh. Give me a permanent marker. Where's a permanent marker? Hey, where's my marker? The all of no return. Uh, there it is. Fantastic. I like that. <clears throat> okay, and this can come off now. Ooh, Colin Shipper says, I use a laser level a lot for center line. I've I don't have that technology and I want one. Um, good shout. Uh, yeah, 34 inches. Dave Lewis, yes I do. Porcupine tree, very cool. Uh, let's move that, I don't need that anymore. And these are relatively delicate screws that I've got. Hmm, I'm going to start with a two millimeter hole. I no, no, two and a half millimeters. I really do tend to eyeball things, and uh, it's not necess It's it's better to actually measure stuff, don't you think? Uh, now, before I do that, though. I'm going to mark on my drill bit how deep I want to go. <laughs> There's already some permanent marker on there and it's actually pretty much where I needed it to be, which is really quite amusing. Precision in all things, precisely eyeballed. Yay. And then I'll put the ground wire in, I promise. So it's important to clear the drill of swarf every now and then. Feel it's starting to gum up. No, that's not a pretty shot, is it really? Yes, the drill bit is actually quite hot. 
we're good. All right. Ground wire. Awesomeness, precision, all or nothing, all righty then. Eyeballed. <laughs> What's all this then? Uh, give it your all. <laughs> all seeing. All right now. All you can eat. Okay. Laughing my all. You guys rule. Um, how do you work out carbon fiber rod lead? This is a question from Sawdust Passion via Super Chat. Um, I use the longest bit of carbon fiber that I can fit in the available space, period. Um, and there we go. Now, ground wire, I knew there was something. Okay, uh, black for ground today. the uh, shielding off. Come on. Here we go. And my phone's booping at me. I suspect there will be a child appearing at some point soon. Yes, let me just check. Mm, not quite. Okay. <clears throat> Ground wire in. Wait. If I filled that with finish, I think I filled that with finish. Hold on. Yeah, I had. <laughs> Take two. Okay. Now, yeah, I'm just uh, sticking, just sticking some grease in each hole quickly. Just a little bit around the top. Probably should have used uh, the almighty all for that. But hey, okay, this isn't necessary all the time. But it does help when you need it, you need it. I'm looking at this thinking, hmm, there's five screws there. Really, I'm sure there's a better way of doing this. Perhaps using a power drill?
Okay. Two down. Three to go. Too bad, this is Jamie Krakrimer, that uh, some company, like Triton or something, made a tool that could turn screws fast. Hmm. <laughs> uh, ben, dumb question from Dave T says, uh, no, sorry, Dave T says, Ben, this is a dumb question. I'm not saying Dave T's question is dumb. I haven't even read it yet. Come on, people. Uh, why do truss rods not go the full length of the neck? Uh, is this a design flaw? Uh, so they should go most of the way. The the area of the neck in the neck pocket. Okay. Towards the ends of the neck, the truss rod isn't actually doing very much at all. Most of the motion is in the center. So, and on top of that, you've got a neck pocket, uh, which is also holding things nice and solid. So the neck pocket is the area where nothing really it wants to be stable and doesn't really want to move in any case. And you want most of the movement to be in and around the 12th fret. And that's essentially why you can get away with not having much truss rod in the neck pocket area, really. <sighs> there may well be a better answer to that question out there somewhere, potentially even in this chat. What do you guys think? Okay. We're talking about Lidl somehow now. Good afternoon, Goth Rider Creations. How the devil are you? I did not forget my ground wire. Saying it like that makes it, think, makes it sound like I forgot the ground wire and I'm redoing everything, but no, I didn't. Let's get a, yeah, look at that. Different shot for the edit. I really do rather enjoy using hand tools. Most of the time, I should have used a drill for this. Goto are truly upping their game. They've always used good screws, but there are some hybrid companies that use screws that would have just, yeah, not worked. Everything's, yeah, really nice. Really nice indeed. Both writers just finished work and it's now time for video editing and watching you work. Um, this isn't work. Um, all right. Let's see what we've got here then. Will it all fit? That's truly, truly the question. I can't even see the holes because of the uh, shielding paint. Of course it fits. It's a crimson template I used. Uh, I do need to put some foam underneath there though. Ah, 
I need to tidy up my workshop so badly, everybody. Like, it's insane. Wasn't Benjamin, child of awesomeness, thou art on a live stream. Keep thy personal comments to a minimum. I gave you the games that you asked for because I did. I care. Yes. Okay. Cool. Okay. I would love for you to come and sign in. Yeah. Not gonna happen. Um, mother will be back shortly. Oh. Well. Uh, for now, I will come. Home. Say hello, everybody. Hola. Hola, amigos. God, I, I love Spanish. Fair I'm enough. I'm going to sit here and read, start to read some, some super chats. Okay, read, uh, well, I've read all the super chats. Oh, no. Uh, New super chat. I don't know, I've read all of those. Um, everybody, Dawson wants super chats to read, so you have to send some super chats now. I suppose, that's, a, I suppose, a good way of getting people to send super chats but uh, no see if there's any queries or questions that you want to read out awesome i'll turn your microphone on there you go cool. so we have Orson in the house he is the soon to be 12 year old in the building yes. and uh, uh wolf of guitar says hola kiddo kiddo is right yeah, yeah so i've just beautiful. chopped up a few pieces of foam Ooh, this is a long one. Uh, Cody Bedford. Cody? Cody. Um, no, it's Corey. Corey, sorry, Corey my bad. Corey Bedford. I'm about to start in the morning with my first setup on a guitar with a Floyd Rose Any Tips. Uh, delegation, delegation, delegation. Uh, uh, stuck up on the uh, on the tissue because you will be crying in at some point today. <sighs> um, it's not too bad. I mean, I'm going to assume that you have to take the uh, the strings off entirely because that's just the way it goes. Bring it all roughly up to tension and stretch the strings, of course. It's something I've avoided for years. But it has to be done. It's just a case of it it will take it will take tuning two or three times longer, but once you've got it all tuned and at the correct level, etc., you'll be fine. Uh, I'm assuming the instrument's already got springs and everything set up and good to go. Please don't move those and that's your that's your only real thing. I've just spotted, I think two people have spelt Ola wrong and it's kind of annoying me. No, don't be, don't be rude. I'm just saying uh, I'm correcting them. Okay, I'm going to read them. Uh, it's almost like... It's Tim Beaton, it's H-O-L-A, not O-L-A. He could be calling you Ola, could be your new name. Hello, Ola. Oh, no. okay. I could deal with Moving that. Moving on, there is Dave T. Ben, I recently inherited some vintage drawers from my late father and grandfather. Many thanks for the inspiration that got me into restoring and, more importantly, using them. Um, I am really sorry that uh, you had to inherit them. Uh, that's uh, it's a less than ideal way of getting new tools, but I mean, it depends on the collection, I suppose. I would probably consider patricide if, if my father had good enough tools. He didn't notice what I just said. That's all right then. Huh? What? <laughs> I made a joke that you were supposed to laugh at. I said I would potentially consider murdering my father if he had good enough tools and you were supposed to look up and say, oh, daddy, you've got really nice tools. Ah. But I've gone to a really dark place here and I feel that the, soup, the live stream is probably not the, the correct forum for that sort of a sense of humour. 
And also you're desperately trying to read a super chat out and I'm just talking over and over and over and over. Okay. And no, over. I'm not trying to read out a super chat. There's another problem, then I'll read out a super chat. <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, Rob, Rob Smoke and Sauce. Is there any way to Rub, correct, smoke and sauce. A, correct a neck where the high E is too close to the edge of the fretboard? Uh, yeah, you need to... The, the neck... the. If it's a set neck, you need to take the bridge and move the bridge. Uh, if it's a tunematic, you can just cut slots. You don't need to move the bridge itself, you just move the slots of where those are. You might then need to move the pickups, etc., depending on what's happened there. If it's a bolt-on neck, release the tension on the springs, the strings, sorry, and try and move the neck to counteract. If necessary, you can have to remove material from either the neck pocket or the body, and then bolt it back in place. Um, yeah, basically your neck is off center. But you knew that. Not sure what's happening there, but hey, stuff's okay, moving. Super chat. Hi Ben. Oh. Hi. What's the name? Mitchell Bus. Hi Ben. I'm looking for a hand plane for Joe King joining ukulele Michael. tops and backs. Michael. I was thinking a uh, number sixty-two, maybe any other suggestions love your work. <laughs> I mean, a number 62 is a fantastic plane for pretty much anything. Um, this here is what you're talking about. So it's a num linear, so number 62, low angle jack plane, adjustable mouth, so you can have it set with a very tight mouth for fine, 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 fine work, or you can open it up for more coarser stuff. If you have the budget for a Lee Nielsen number 62, I would say get it. It will be used for a damn sight more than just jointing ukulele tops and backs. It is uh, it is almost a be-all end-all plane. I absolutely love it. If you can find a Stanley number 62, then, well, I mean, I personally would love one of those things and I've never seen one. We have had way over 40,000 tools. We've listed over 40,000, 45,000 tools, I think, at vintagetoolshop.com over the last four or five years. I've had probably twice that many tools come through. Well, let's say 60,000 tools come through. I have not ever seen a standing number 62. Um, they are hard to come by in the UK. And long one from Patrick. FR bridges change on string at time support. Change one string at a time. With a piece of a wood piece of a wood the depth of the cavity yes so you chuck a piece of wood in there if you are not I'm, I'm, i assumed earlier on that we were talking about uh, somebody doing a full setup and having to um and having to level crown polish dress the frets etc to take, so take all of the strings off if you can get away with changing one string at a time 100 percent do that lock the bridge off so it doesn't move chuck chuck a, a wedge of wood in there etc i 100 percent agree with you okay so i've just used that to mark out the the drilling position of the holes and uh, uh, yeah i don't actually need to go very deep at all ah, which is ideal. Wow. Let's uh, maybe use uh, <coughs> the all for all. Goth Rider Creations. Mm -hmm. Ben, you need to start donating some of these tools. The hard work of Goth who wants to be a workshop with no budget. Moving swiftly on. Okay, so I'd, uh, the hole that I was marking into was somewhat larger than the drill bit and it went off a little bit off center. So I've now taken a center point drill bit and I'm going to push that, s I went to the wrong camera. And I'm gonna push that down. It almost perfectly fits the position and that's gonna mark 
exactly where I want to go. I should have done that before. I'm ever so slightly distracted by the fact that I have my son with me. And Goth Rider Creations, I think I uh, something happened during your your question there. I, I'm not sure what it was. <sighs> Some sort of uh, interference, cosmic. Yeah, cosmic dust. Something. <laughs> He's just thanked me. <laughs> Okay, so I've marked that and now I'm going in with this beautiful birdcage all made by um, BC Woodworks. Not sponsored, just, uh, just love his work. Well, not sponsored. I, he, I didn't buy the tool, he did give it to me, but still. Who said that? Yes, they are. Ground squirrels, Mr. Waffles, I love it. These are ground squirrels for sure. Toby D, yes he is. Yes, he is letting me watch it. And yes, I do love it. We are watching it tonight. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah, Absolutely, yes, right? yeah, no, no, no. As soon as the stream is over, we're gonna sit down and, and yeah. watch the next couple of episodes. Yeah. I'm not happy, this is... Mm, come on then, let's just use a short bit. We don't need the long one. There we go. Someone's just had a quite a good idea. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> Doctor, you could hire oh, hold on for a second. sets of tools for a period of time to build it. Uh, so I had that idea uh, probably 10 or 15 years ago when we started doing full essential levelling uh, dressing cool toolkits. Cool kits, they're cool kits. Um, and in the end, we decided not to do it because so many people, it's, it's such an inexpensive set of tools in, in reality um, that renting it out, I always feel like renting out a thousand pound electric bike, for example, if you're, I'm seriously considering buying um, a few electric bicycles to rent out to students when they come because oftentimes students are coming from America or Hong Kong or whatever and um, they need transport and taxis are incredibly expensive where we are like mind-blowing so um, renting a thousand pound bike for a week or two is one thing but um, uh, 150 odd pounds worth of tools or less is a different story I think it's uh, I don't know maybe I'm wrong uh, but yes a rent to buy scheme potentially is something that we could consider for for quality tools or vintage tools um, but it's it's not something i've i don't think there's enough of a market for it um, that being said uh, drop me an email goth rider creations and we'll see if we will we'll, we'll talk how's that Okay, I'm not sure. Someone just said that renting them out would be hellish, hellish expensive. It would. That, that, and in reality, that's the thing. It would feel like I'm taking advantage of. Uh, uh, it would feel like I'm taking advantage. Ooh, S M M 
years, then I think anyone who was an old, who has an old Stanley 62 is not going to want, going to part with it while living. The current version is made in Mexico. Yep. That's, uh, that's, that's the truth. And there's also, to be honest, the problem. Um, you've got... My, my, my only issue with having the vintage tool shop is that all too often I am dealing with an estate. I'm dealing with, I'm, I'm pulling through some dead person's tools and it, you know, it's two things. It's either I'm pulling, I'm buying a collection from somebody who's died or I'm buying a collection from somebody who is no longer physically capable of using them. And I'm not sure which is sadder to me. Um, but it's offset by the fact that I absolutely love the tools and uh, we are bringing them to a whole different set of individuals to, to use and love them. So that's all right then. Send your super chats, yo! Come on, awesome. There is no super chats. Awesome's, I'm telling them to send super chats because you know oh, you wanted super chats to read. Yeah, no. Please don't send super chats just because we're asking. That's we're not that kind of a channel. Um, questions, ask questions. Uh, let's see if awesome picks them up. Yes, I am reading anything that is longer. And three lines. Oh uh, no, or it's a question. That looks really interesting. Uh, I'm basically just reading all of them, and then it's basically, if it's more than three lines, I'm reading it no matter what. Okay. Pretty much. Well, yeah, just edit yourself. Edit yourself. I'm so confused what this one's saying. It's Lisa Hashberg. Lisa Hashberger. A little bit of both. However, the that the one that can no longer use them have the knowledge that some will. True. So yeah, they they both are sad both options both of my comments are as sad, i.e. the people who've died and uh, they're gone and can't use the tools anymore, or the people who are selling the tools because they can't use them anymore, and um, but they at least still have the knowledge of how to use them, but that's also sad because oftentimes that's not passed on. Um, okay, so it turns out that I'm being somewhat distracted and I'm fiddling around like a noob. First of all, I didn't check to see that uh, that works. Let me So that's a Seymour Duncan. So, uh, never mind, Orson, this is okay. I thought something would go slightly wrong, and uh, yeah, essentially the covers don't quite fit in. Uh, they're, they've got sharper corners than the route, and uh, I didn't check, which is a little bit silly. So I'm just going to go in with a chisel quickly and uh, gently sort that out.
I don't want to take the corner off the plastic, it's too, too thin in there. Tim Beaton says, guess when that day comes, I'll have to have a big goodbye guitar sale. I did see that. Yeah, give me a call for that one, Tim. And uh, But yes, I, let me phrase this properly. I have joked, I have been known to joke in the past that while I am collecting a huge amount of tools and now guitars, and not a huge amount of guitars, I'm, I'm collecting a lot of stuff, but I've also collected a couple of businesses that are very good at selling both of those things. So my son here is not going to have an issue getting rid of all of my tools if he chooses to do so, because he'll have a vintage tool shop through which to do it. Because I'm superiorly, superior at planning these things. Ooh, someone's just asked, what did they miss? Because they're just joining. What did they miss? All sorts. Uh, yeah. As it currently stands, I'm cutting the... Uh, um, cutting the corners out of the pickup cavities because I didn't check... beforehand. These... There's a super chat from... JS Trucking and Guitars. Hey man, I Don't assume you're uh, on a break today. And it says, computer, it's an emoji with a computer with work. It's just work. Okay, uh, yeah, JS Trucking is currently driving um, around somewhere in the United States uh, working. Cool. Uh, there's a Five liner. Okay. What you are dealing with for picking picking pick up covers is the worst thing to deal with and I have been there a few times myself. Wish these were always the same size regardless of brand. I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree one hundred percent. Jeremy Cole. Hey Ben, what do you think of the new Stabbing Westwood album? Sounds like 1998 all over again to me. I have not checked it out. I didn't realise there was one. I'm that out of touch. Um, I, uh, uh, yeah, take me back to the 1990s is all I'll say. Um, Oh, I know what I'm doing. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. What's up? I've just looked at the last um, super chat that we got, which was at 3.51, and then the one that we just got by JS Trucking was 4.08. Yeah, uh, you tend to lose time during these live streams. Uh, I like to blame the viewers, actually. <laughs> okay, there's two really long ones. Paul Cook, don't know. My thumb joints are what is starting to hurt these days but i can't imagine i would be able to adapt like that oh it's tim beaton again yeah and then george davis person you may not person you may not in what? Who? Is it just me, or can I not read that word? What question? Who's who's about it? Uh, George Davis. George Davis. Person you may not. Um, 
be interest, interested with your dad does, but you may be amazed. Sorry, he's saying, Orson, you may not be interested in everything your dad does, but you will be amazed as you get old how much you are learning without realizing it. <laughs> um, he called you person, not awesome. Yes. Which is, which is cool. I mean, you are a person. Yes, I am a person. Um, the O and the P are very close. So here we go. This is what's happening. Okay. Finger slip. I've got a tiny, 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 tiny little chisel and I'm taking the corner out with that. Stopping yes, it at 90 oh, degrees looks a little yes, bit weird, but that looks good. We kind of talked. I was answering a question. And asked I'm sorry, what, uh, what's, what's up? Uh, you were answering what you carry on. I'll shut yeah. up. Yes, Paul Cook, it does. Much harder. And and also you're learning a lot. Uh, uh, Paul needs one pound seventy nine super chat. Ben, surely primogent is isn't your kind of thing. And then one for that. Stop! 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 stop. I have no clue what that means. Primogenitor isn't your kind of thing. Ah, I know that word and I don't know what it means. <laughs> Google. Google, Google, Google. Google, Google, Google. Primogenitor. <laughs> uh, oh, the right of succession belonging to the firstborn child. Absolutely bloody not. The, first, um, the firstborn child is Jasmine, Orson's middle, yes. and then there's Byron, and uh, they will each have... Um, access to slash whatever part of my life they fancy or are interested in. Um, I'm, uh, I would love for, for one or both or all of them to be interested in, in the guitars and the building and all that, but in reality, um, <clears throat> I was sort of wondering if any of them would potentially maybe uh, grow up to rebel Maybe be an accountant or something useful like that. Okay, there's multiple. Okay, Paul needs very funny one auto carrot. <laughs> and then Paul, um, how are you? Uh, mother, uh, not mother, Tanya. I thought that was Jasmine walking up for some reason. Why? Well, thank you. Mother's mad at me. Do you want tea? Uh, I would love a tea. Thank you very much. Oh, no. Oh. oh no, that was a tea mug. That was tea, actually. Yeah, there we go. Fantastic. Thank you. Absolutely. Adios, familias. I don't think Mummy's mad at you. Oh, she looked annoyed when she came in. Hmm. Are you not supposed to be on live streams? She's still. Bit paranoid about that. Well, you are I a little. You have a certain. I learned my lesson. Okay, fair enough. Um, Paul Cook says Ben's leaving his estate to the puppies. I mean, due to the puppies, I'm probably not going to have an estate. Those things are expensive, yeah. <laughs> uh, Tim Beaton, who gets the squirrel after you've gone, Ben? I think we will raffle the squirrels off for charity. I just read it because Tim Beaton is, you know. Funny. And cool. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So I've got that all fit now. That was uh, somewhat annoying. I generally try and check that before the build, uh, before I, you know, as things progress. Anyhow, now that I've done it, I'm going to, without the pickup in the way, uh, mark out the positions of these screws. There we go. That's quite a tight fit, but... Uh, Paul needs is a French person. That's fine. Uh, I don't think he is. No, he prefers French for the first time. He said yeah. he can go French. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, center point drill just to mark the position. <laughs> Adrian, yes I do, it's been very fun. What was the question? Uh, Olsen has the coolest childhood. Uh, I'm not so sure. Well, I don't see many other kids with a cool dad who makes guitars. Oh, shucks. Um, <laughs> not many other kids have a dad who does live streams from home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just pooped myself. I just pooped myself a little bit. Uh, figuratively speaking, this guitar has all sorts of cracks and crevices going through internally, and I just drilled into one of them and thought for a second that I drilled through the entire body. Okay, Whew. the big, the big unit. Hey. Oh yes, the big unit. Uh, once I get guitar lessons, I will be able to. After six months of guitar lessons, my father will build me a guitar and the big units joined us. Okay. And the big units what what? The big units joined us. He's oh, just joined us. He's, he's come back after chats. a... Uh, after a... Uh, oh, I looked at the chats and there was no big unit. Well, he's... He, yeah, he's been doing a, okay. a lecture on 35,000 volt stuff. Hold on for a second, Orson. Um, <coughs> You have derailed about 14 thoughts there, child. Oh, um, anonymous botch. Don't forget about the Freddo, the shielding paint. Someone's just told me to not let you forget. And I will not. Yeah, so the shielding paint, I'm not too worried about the shielding paint in the corners of this. It's, it's not gonna make any major difference to anything and uh, when the covers are in you can't actually see because it's a ch it, it you can't even see that it's not there so uh, yeah that's fine big units just said he's just on break for a little bit he's on break is he yeah okay <laughs> um big units is a lecturer uh in electrical safety and stuff like that. Cool. Okay, Cameron Gore. Crimson Guitars Extra Pro. Pro tip. Pro tip. I've just done something. No, I have not. Okay. If you think your mom is mad at you, start cleaning around the house. Yep. Yep. You know that one well. Yes, I do. Tim Beaton. Tire Man guitar basics seem a lot more adventurous with basses and basses shape pickup string numbers. Say that again slower. <clears throat> okay. Tim Beaton. Yeah. Tire Man guitar. Okay, he's talking to Tire Man guitars. I get it. Oh, oh. Oh, at. I did not see the at sign. Yeah. Huh. I did not see that. Okay, I'm just going to leave that conversation alone then. <laughs> I think he was basically saying that uh, bass players tend to be a lot more adventurous than guitar players with regards to guitar design and wiring and you know and all of that sort of stuff which they do <laughs> well, man just well they are to a certain man extent said okay oh, there was something okay okay dave t p bass pickups and humbuckers shielding paint not needed Okay, Steve Butcher, this shielding paint in 99.999% of the... Uh, Dave T, I said. I'm not talking to Dave T, I'm reading to... I'm talking to Steve. Um, of, the, uh, of the instrument. 
uh, it's just in the very corner there that it isn't and uh, I'm not entirely convinced that uh, shielding paint is required in pickup cavities in any case um, but uh, yeah I understand that you were just goading me for fun you meanie awesome you'll go I think I should I think we're quite happy with you staying if you want. I'm hungry. I will, I will be back. I'm hungry. Fair enough. Okay. And then you just get to the your mouth. Plus and stuff. Okay, two different sized, two different pickups, two different manufacturers of pickups, and the screws that came with the Seymour Duncan had a bigger head, a bigger pan head than the other set. So I've decided to uh, to take these out and use matching screws across both sets, or both pickups at least. It looks better. Thank you very much. And I'm back with a cookie. Hi, back. I'm Danny. Come on, seriously? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm just doing a rough height adjustment here. I think that'll do nicely. Alrighty. Wow. Okay. I'm not sure where that chisel was. Okay, so there's a bunch of, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Waffles likes the look of copper tape. I like the look as well, it's just an absolute uh, nightmare. Dave Lewis. Andre Silva's saying, Orson, you didn't chew your food properly. <laughs> uh, Adam Dutton, this will be a raffle, this guitar, this bass will be raffled off, but only when the, when the main videos start going live on the Crimson Guitars channel. Um, I, uh, yeah, there's no point. Basically, we've we've we're ahead of the editing. This will start going live in about a month's time, 
and at that point um, we'll have photographs of the finished instrument for the raffle but we'll also know exactly how many episodes will be going live we're finally I'm finally getting ahead of the editors I know it's amazing it's been the plan from day one and it's actually happening The real question is, will I be able to stay ahead? I am not so sure. <sighs> okay. Recap. This live stream has been going on for five and a half hours at this point. I started with an instrument that had a... Well, it was pretty much ready for hardware. And after five and a half hours, I have finally managed to install two pickups and a bridge. And I've cut away a lot of fret material and installed uh, shiny brass uh, markers inside all of the slots. And there was four hours of messing around with that. The fretboard is now refinished, fretless, beautiful, good to go. Uh, Byron isn't really allowed to come in. No. Okay, so let's do the let's do the strap buttons. Yeah. Okay, a couple of gold strap buttons. Just while we're here, I had some uh, I had some leather samples arrive the other day. There we go. Oh Well then, if there's ever a question of whether it's allowed or not, don't do it. No. No, sure, sure, sure. Um, okay, so I don't have a leather stamp at the moment. I do have. Okay, so I'm just going to use a um, a circle template to draw. Guitars in the way. What are you drawing? I'm just going to make a couple of leather strap cushions. Okay, this. It's really useful. It's incredibly useful. Yes. That's cool. Uh, yeah, I need to get some more actually. Okay, so. system so it can like move around following you. Yeah but like more no like it moves on its own. It tracks where you are. Yes moves. that would be cool. Okay so in reality what I need here is a a leather punch that cuts out the, the size I need. Um, but I don't have that at the moment. So I'm just going to draw the circles I want and then uh, chop them out by hand. But uh, first of all, let us drill. Let's drill a hole in the center.
It's not that I don't have leather punches, it's that I don't have a clue where they are right now. I'm rather used to standing up all day, every day. Yeah. Sitting down hurts me. What? Yeah, really. Well, I sit down most of my, my day because only a few two, two days of the week. No. It doesn't do it when, I'm in, when it's in the air. Orson is adjusting the height of a very squeaky little chair. Okay, so that's a very handmade looking uh, little leather washer and uh, it is what it is. The leather punch would be better. But I think that's quite cool. <laughs> I don't trust that. Andre Silva, potentially. Yeah. What can I also say? Let's art the cheesemaker? Speak up. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't even know when you Now, that's all good. Robert, ah, oh, just bless you. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I sneezed in your ears. Please forgive me. And then, <sighs> Beth McKellar just blessed you as well. Everybody's you. Oh, bless. Okay, that's the last time I get to hang this base up from the ceiling in that way. I didn't understand that, sorry. I know. Is the Orson mic off and Gesundheit? Good point. Yes, Orson's microphone was off. Thank it's you right. for the heads up. And uh, thank you for the uh, blessing. Okay. What does Gesundheit is German for bless you when you sneeze. Oh. I don't know. Yes, 
<laughs> Five and a half hours have been avoiding doing the writing and counting. Tattoo Mike. Tattoo Mike, huh? Oh, is that his name? Yeah. Uh, Tahoe Mike. <laughs> Tattoo Tahoe. Mike. Tahoe Mike, you need to change your name. You're Tattoo Mike from now on. <laughs> I've been avoiding doing the wiring and counting. Uh, Dave T just resent that message. <sighs> Dave T. Dave T just resent. It's strange how one's written word can be interpreted in so many ways and sometimes misunderstood. He sent that, that like five seconds ago. Um, what had we misunderstood about that he'd written? I don't know. Marsha, how are you? Hello. Hello. Uh, Dave T retracted the question. Do -de do -de do -de do -de do do yes. do do. James Krakremer sharp chisels for the win. Absolutely. Man zero five, good day, Ben. If you had one album to listen to from the start and finish while working on a guitar, what would it be? What would the album be? Did uh, you hear that? Blood sugar sex magic. What? Blood sugar sex magic. Red Hot Chili Peppers, fantastic album. It's the first one that came to mind. Or maybe um, the uh, the Black album, um, Metallica. I Actually, King Crimson, whoa. Nelly Furtado. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> absolutely joking. <laughs> mass unsubscribe, mass unsubscribe. Uh, it was a Justin Timberlake. Okay, so we've, we've got this down. Uh, Orson, awesome. if you're gonna do that, mic. no. No, go out as far away from the shop as you can and do that. Far so, away. So you want me to go to the church on the opposite side of the village? If you insist. I think Mummy might get annoyed with you. What's the best way to spray a rattle can finish on a through-neck guitar with no spray booth or anything equivalent? Best to hang it vertically or suspend it horizontally somewhere. Vertically is absolutely fine. Uh, spray, uh, start your spray off the edge of the guitar. Awesome. Out of the workshop, please. Thank you. Uh, spray off the edge, start off the edge and go down to the off and then start. If you start and stop internally to the body, then you will have more finish where you start and stop uh, than in the middle and it won't look great. Do light dustings, coats on a relatively non-windy day, definitely do it on a dry day and you'll be okay. Uh, you don't absolutely have to have a spray booth. You really don't. Okay. So. So here we go. Strings. Roto sound. 40 to 100 gauge. Um, red, white and blue. For what it's worth, for what it's worth, I'm really looking forward to this. And for what it's worth, uh, so that was a stool that Orson was making squeak while he was trying to adjust the height. It's got a, a wooden screw going through the base and uh, I have greased that. It's obviously uh, no longer. Was that worse than the noise you worse than the noise you were making there, Rawson? I'm trying to stop. It's a very you need to get a new freaking one of those language. Stool. Oh, why does it really what do you say that freaking is a awesome. bad it's not a bad word. Stop. Okay. 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 Anyway, I'm getting bored. I will leave now. <laughs> Say goodbye, Orson. Adios, amigos. <laughs> 
So Orson has just realized that mother is here and uh, can sign in. What's happening? Oh, I got it. So there we go. Uh, I had uh, s the end of the string landed on my mouse pad and uh, was messing with the uh, was messing with the uh, the computer. But anyway. James Truckin said you should do the wiring before installing the strings. Uh, too late. What am I doing? I'm ever so slightly distracted. Yes, I should do the wiring. Uh, what I should also do, I'll get this, I'll get that going later. Uh, so the soldering iron needs to come up. Where are we? It's coming up on five o'clock. I honestly thought that I would be finished this by now. But hey, what can you do? What I should do is drink my tea. Uh, no, the strings are not flat wound. We've got a 4200 grade roto wound, nickel on steel round wound, roto bass, sorry, nickel on steel round wound bass guitar strings. Great all round bright tone. And I'm sorry, I was just drinking with your ears. I completely forgot I had a microphone on. Okay. Yes, yes, Elliot Trent, I need a, a new soldering iron. I absolutely agree with you. I need a proper soldering station, solder station. Uh, I have had good ones in the past and they've ended up being utilized elsewhere in the company uh, because I don't really do huge amounts. Uh, this is making it absolutely certain I'm putting the right strings in the right place. So I'm leaving more wines 
on this string, it's going to push it down further. Actually, I do have a tuner. really 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 feel like I need to build more bases okay now this is an insanely high action right now uh, it's it's horrific <laughs> uh, and there's also Much better. So just to reduce the relief quite a bit. And there should be a little Allen key here. To reduce the bridge height. I'm just gonna get this roughly set up. <laughs> Look at that instrument. I'm going to get it very, 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 very roughly set up and then uh, uh, we'll get on with the wiring while the strings are just settling down a little bit.
Nice. So yeah, I'm removing quite a bit of height off these saddles. Uh, which means that at some point I'm probably going to end up uh, grinding down uh, the grub screws so that it's more comfortable to myself a fretless guitar. It's very slippery. Yes, Emma, it's ash, uh, stained ash. All right, I'm really, 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 really happy with that. Um, <clears throat> now, it's time to plug in my horrible little soldering iron. Let's clear some space first. Got it. Um, English ash, sapili neck, ebony fret board. Okay, soldering iron, she's on. Now, uh, using round wound, the person who uh, ends up winning this guitar can absolutely use flat wound. It will be up for auction. It's, it's going to be raffled during the live videos. So. If you're watching this in the live video, this instrument could be yours and we, I will happily add frets if you would prefer a fretted bass rather than a fretless. Uh, I will happily change it to round wounds if you want, to flat wounds rather than round wounds, etc. If you happen to be the person who wins. Uh, but 
whatever happens, somebody needs to go home with this instrument. Congratulations. Uh, check out the link in the description below and we'll go from there. But onto the wiring. <sighs> All right, fun times. Now, that's going, that's done. Where are me? There they are. All right, Dave T, well, it's an option. Will there be much of a difference in the setup for between fretted and fretless? Um, the principles are basically the same, but uh, um, yeah, it does. Yes, there is a difference. Now I'm not particularly an expert. Uh, of course, I've got to finish. <laughs> this is the problem when you when you do everything to absolute perfection, you end up with things that are just a little bit tight. Once they've had a little bit of finish in them, we're talking nine and a half, we're talking ten, nine and a half. Okay, so I just need to open these uh, these holes up a little bit going with my drill in reverse. Okay. And I'm also aware of where the wires are. There you go. Doing that in reverse means that the drill bit isn't likely to catch, grab and rip material out. Now the wiring that I'm going to be using on this is fairly traditional base, uh, two volumes and a tone. And uh, <laughs> of course there's still some work to do. Uh, my pots are a little bit big and I remember thinking that this was going to be the case when I routed the stuff. And then I completely messed up because I carried on without exercising my right to gouge. Or was it the right to party? One of the two. So I'm just making a little bit more, more room for these rather large pots uh, in the cavity where I marked out the position from the front, they're a little bit close to the edge of the uh, internal size of the cavity, uh, which I did notice earlier, but uh, earlier, i.e. when I drilled them through. And then we just moved on because, uh, because I've been doing far too many different builds or Oh, you name your excuse. Come up with one for me. There we go.
I love using a sharp tool. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's a fairly low. Mm, yeah. No, those are too short. I'm not going to use that. Hold on. I'm not going to do it. My gosh. My gosh and golly, I'm not going to finish this today. Okay, so I had my last two 250k pots because I don't use them very often at all. Well, where did I put the damn things now? There we go. <sighs> yeah. My last two 250k pots, I don't use 250k hardly ever. And these have got incredibly short shafts. I am not going to mess around in here. You're not gonna hear this guitar today. Sorry. Um, I'm not gonna route down to make the cavity shallower. I'm gonna to go to Crimson Headquarters tomorrow, pick up some proper uh, pots. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Where are we? Camera two, where's camera two? No, camera three. So this is what I want to work with, and this is what I got. It's a little bit micro now, isn't it? Uh, that's for use on a, uh, on a scratch plate, and it's just, yeah, just ain't gonna do, it's not gonna cut it. Um, but this is fine because I have a date with my son this evening and yeah, this has been a six hour stream so far. So I'm actually quite, I'm okay with stopping. It's six o'clock, is it? No, it's five o'clock. That's a, that's a good time to stop. Um, alrighty, the instrument itself, albeit a little bit dusty, I'm really happy with how it's turning out. Um, so, Look, I'm sorry to disappoint you. I'm, can you see I'm avoiding looking at the comments? Uh, don't do this to us. <laughs> Flavius. Uh, bonehead, pots for a paper thin scratch plate. Absolutely. Garage master, well, there's a thing. Um, you, you're not wrong. Crying from Beth. Flavius, shocked face. Uh, Paul Cook says the wiring will just have to wait. That's a surprise from Andre with a flat face. Um, the old, the, the animated Aladdin movie where uh, uh, it's uh, where the sort of, uh, Jabbar says ecstatic, or was it the parrot? I don't know, but that that sort of flat ecstatic uh, is how I is how I read that. Um, <laughs> yeah, Robert R says, yeah, Ben, when you have to start kicking things out of the way, that's when you need to do some cleaning and organizing. The cleaning and organizing is in progress. It really is. The whole new extension of the workshop here is, um, is, is pretty much in place. It just needs, well, I'm almost there. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really happy. Um, I'm really, really happy with how this is going to, is coming together uh, as a workshop. Uh, now, what I am going to be doing is setting up some sort of a system for stock control 
whereby I have a certain amount of, of things in very well organized drawers. And, uh, and if it ever gets below that, i.e. 250k pots or whatever, uh, then I need to bring in more and I'll have a sort of a weekly shopping list. Basically, what I'm saying is I'm, I would like to become more organized. And uh, yeah, I think that'll happen. I think that'll happen. Okay, off camera, I'm going to cut those and put some uh, shielding paint around because you don't need to watch me do that. Uh, I'm going to tidy up the bench a little bit here so that we can have a quick chat. What I need to do really is turn the soldering iron on. There we go. Okay. Uh, you just can't rush the final stretch. That's burning guitars. I absolutely agree. Uh, so it, it is the Ben Ultimate episode. It really is. Um, Work-life balance. Ben, have fun with the family. I will. Uh, look, fine. Oh, okay. Ask me questions. I'm just going to cut these cavities out. I want to make the... Uh, I want to make the hole a little bit bigger for this. So drill out a 10 mil now. I reckon another... We've got another 15 minutes, basically. And then... Uh, and then I can call it a day. But the bass, it is strung. It breathes, it's coming together. Soon. In reverse, yep, in reverse. Okay, that now fits almost. Let me just let me just do this. Okay. Yes, I'm being very careful of the uh, neck pickup wires there. So that's that one. And then this side, yeah, it's not going to take very much at all. Ben, I now have a two piece, I have a piece of beach. I could probably get two tops from it. What does beach like to work with? Beach in general is a fairly hard and heavy wood. It depends on what you've got though. It could be steamed, it could be uh, spalted, uh, etc. Um, it acts, it's fairly similar to to rock maple actually. It's a very, very hard material, but uh, as hard woods go, if you've got a, a good bandsaw, sharp tools, etc., you should be fine. Uh, it's not a particularly, no, rephrase. It's not a classically pretty timber. Yeah, now the thing is I could have pretended and just put 500k pots in here and said, oh, well, that's just what it sounds like. But uh, it's supposed to have 250k's. And uh, yeah, there's no point in... Uh, fumbling at the last 
second now, is there? Timing guitar says it's, uh, it looks good. Quarter sawn with tiny ray flick. Nice. Yeah, well, I mean, go for it. It's, uh, it's a cool wood. Bags of sustain. There we go. Okay, so those two are done. I could have done them with a Dremel and a carving tool, of course, but... Um, Uh, but that's not, it's just not necessary. I can't talk while doing that. Um, now let us paint in some shielding paint quickly. I should also check the back plate for fit, shouldn't I? Uh, anybody have any questions, comments, criticisms? This is the time. This is a shielding paint that is uh, in need of diluting a little bit. Or a lot, really. A little bit of water. Um, Lisa, the knobs are a pair of um, aluminium uh, knobs that I turned. It's just beautiful. That, uh, yeah. Hold on, I'm now dirty. That's better. Okay, shielding paint done. You go there. I've lost everything. There we go. Does shielding paint isolate as well as copper tape? 100%, if not better. Copper tape has a, unless it's very expensive copper tape, has an adhesive backing that itself is not conductive. The very expensive ones have got conductive sticky stuff. It's incredible. Um, and essentially, if you have to use uh, two, three, four, five different uh, sections of copper tape in order to cover your, uh, the inside of your cavity, which is often the case, just, just by dint of trying to make it all crinkle into place, um, <clears throat> unless you fold the copper over, so it's copper touching copper um, in a physical uh, in a physical way, then you'll have sections of your uh, of the copper tape that actually isn't necessarily electrically conductive or connected to each other. Therefore, you'll have a partial Faraday cage, which isn't as good as this. Um, this, the whole thing, is 100% connected and conductive and creating Faraday cage. So. Yeah, it is 100% better uh, than 
copper tape. Find me in the co Ooh, excuse me. Here you go. Find me in the comments. Okay, done that. And uh, those go in there. So here's the back plate that we made. I might have to scrape away some finish. Let's have a look. It's a little tight, but uh, look, I'm going to leave that for now. I'm going to leave that for now. I want to call it a day. So, uh, so I will. Uh, yeah. Will you be using long pots or extra long? I just... To be honest, I'm going to be using normal pots, not the short ones or not the extra long ones. I've got a six millimeter thick section of top to go through. It's a normal, it's a normal amount. So yeah, it's absolutely fine. Um, could you just use some shielding paint to complete the connection from the copper to copper? Uh, but then if you have shielding, just use that, lol. Um, it is way messier, but there's also a lot less uh, risk of cutting yourself. Benjamin, check for the rest of your hardware needs. I only say that because we have all made that extra trip to the store and hated it. This is the thing, I need to have an organized so with the new workshop, some of these drawers that currently have tools in, I'm not going to have tools, it's just going to have hardware, and I'm going to have sections, okay, this is my 250k parts, these are my 500k parts, these are da 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 and when I take the last sort of one or two out, or reach halfway point, I just have to re restock from Crimson, it's, it's not difficult, I'm there all the time. But, um, but yeah, it, it is what it is. Uh, it's uh, organisation and a lack of organization so uh, there we go okay now Jer jeremy cole i agree the wavelength of a 50 cycle uh, interference is about 5,000 kilometers so a perfect faraday cage isn't strictly necessary i have heard that i have heard people who know more than me argue against that as well <clears throat> so at this point i'm just doing perfect faraday cages just because uh, i've also started recently um, salt, uh, screwing a ground wire to the Faraday cage as well and the baritone that I just completed was the absolute quietest guitar I've ever made go figure uh, so it's interesting anyway um, now <laughs> Paul Needs says, Tar Ben, I, I bought the wrong ones and really don't want to thin the top that way. Lies, tears, I agree. So th the ones that I'm going to use have a threaded shaft that is about 12 millimeters long, 12 millimeters of threaded material. That's what I want to use, so we're going to do it. Uh, Dave Lewis says, Crimson shielding paint is better and quicker to use than copper and silver tape. So many people use the tape and pots and things touch the tape and short out, leaving people scratching their heads. True. That happened to us recently with uh, Robert Fripp build. Horrendously complicated wiring. Built the guitar, was working one day, wasn't working the next day. <laughs> Something was shorting out. Um, and it was shorting out on the, shield, on the, on the paint even, but uh, yeah. Claire says, hey Ben, thanks for your answer on your email. <laughs> no worries. Uh, after basically fighting with the ESP, they finally accepted to replace it. Fantastic, because you had said that they had discontinued that guitar. I'm really glad that you got a better one. Or are going to get what is hopefully a better one. Congratulations. <sighs> Goady the roadie is just goading me. Yep, absolutely. Um, but there we go. Okay, look, I am... I am at headquarters tomorrow. I have got to finish this. It's a bit of wiring, doesn't have to be done on a live stream, but I might as well. 
Uh, I have got some other bits and pieces to do on live stream. So I think what I'm going to do is schedule a live stream probably potentially. See, I don't like making promises without actually being able to uh, follow through as it were. I believe it or not, really want to see this finished. Okay. Yeah. Let's say Wednesday afternoon. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I am going to, at the end of this, schedule another stream for Wednesday at uh, half past one. And that gives me time to be at headquarters in the morning. I don't think I have anything else booked. <laughs> but uh, we'll do that. I've got a couple of other things to look at uh, that can be done in stream. And uh, yeah, that would work. So for now, I'm going to say thank you very much for uh, coming, go to the ready. It has got a wire, uh, uh, a ground wire. Of course it does. You wouldn't let me forget. Uh, I'm really looking forward to moving on to finishing this and moving on to the next builds. Uh, you know, not too dirty. Lisa's asking if I'm going to do the hand tool only build on a live stream. I'm not going to do that. It's, uh, it requires more concentration and it also requires, uh, it, this, because it's a hand tool, there's going to be some very, very, very long jobs that are just boring as all hell for everybody involved. Well, not necessarily everybody. I'm going to be enjoying most of it. I have already unplugged the soldering iron. But thank you for caring. The amount of times I've left those on by mistake overnight, it's a horrendous waste of power. Yes, Claire, you absolutely should have ordered a guitar from me instead. NTO Steve, editing out the use of the battery drill is easier. Alrighty, I like it. Thank you very much. I'm going to say good night. Good night, you beautiful people. I will uh, see you on Wednesday if you're about. If not, next time. Rock and roll. Cheerio. Bye now.